and welcome back to Columbus for our coverage of Origins 2017. I'm Eric Summer. We're kicking off the live stream for the second day of the fair. It is Thursday. It's Thursday, right? It's Thursday. Uh, and we've got a whole slew of stuff for you today. We've got designers, we've got publishers, we've got questions, we've got answers. It's all coming to you. And thank you for joining us. And it begins in two seconds. Hello and welcome back to Columbus for our coverage of Origins 2017. I'm Eric Summerer. I'm here with Brady Sadler. You are a game designer with games. two games from different publishers. Yep. And, and you're, you're talking about them both. Let's start with the little one first. Okay, little one first. So um, my brother and I, my design partner Adam, uh, we designed a small game called uh, Awful Fantasy the Card Game, and this funded on Kickstarter last year. Okay, and, um, let's bring that box yeah, over sure, here yeah. so we can see it a little bit. This is better. a prototype box, but it's hitting retail next month, actually, so you'll see the real thing. Okay. So uh, what the, this is like a light set collection game where you it's based in this Awful Fantasy IP, which is a pretty popular Twitter feed mm -hmm. ran, ran by our friends. And you're trying to collect a story which is made up of fantasy cards, and you want to get a event, or you want to get, sorry, you want to get like a plot, you want to get a protagonist, and you want to get an antagonist. So you want to collect a set, and they're all pretty silly themes of all these different characters, and you're, those are collected by using awful cards. Okay. So, and then you also play as crazy versions of real life artists like George R.U. Farton and Carrie Brooks, which is Terry Brooks. Uh -huh. All kinds of funny yeah. puns, you know. Okay. So this is hitting retail next month. It successfully funded. And I wanted to mention it because right now on Kickstarter we have a follow-up game with the same publisher, which is based on uh, mine and Adam's popular Warhammer Quest, the adventure card game. Okay. Um, and that's called Epic AF which is epic, awful fantasy, but it's funnier if you're short in it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's, I, that's a rule of comedy I was not aware of. Yeah, yeah. So um, so that's on Kickstarter right now. It's next for the next month. We're seeking funding for it. And plays the same as Warhammer Quest, the adventure card game. And it's actually compatible if you sleep the cards. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's, that's available now. And then this is going to be available next month retail. All right. Awful fantasy, the card game. Yep. All right, next up. Next up. We have a fighting game. Yes, we have a uh, cooperative miniatures fighting game. Okay. It's based on an original IP, which is highly inspired by Street Fighter, you know, yep. Tekken, all these, all these popular Yeah, we're looking fighters. at these. These are pretty common uh, archetypes yes. that you see in fighting games. Yep. Um, these guys look a little familiar, at least stylistically. Yeah, yeah, okay. definitely. So what, what sort of uh, gameplay are we looking at? So it's like I said, it's fully cooperative. So there's two modes of play. There's arcade mode and there's story mode. And they both play very similarly. They're both inspired by arcade mode. Arcade mode is you go, you're going to pick a fighter. Each player's going to be a fighter. They have their own unique decks. You're going to pick an enemy, which has a boss card and an enemy deck that has yep. all his minions and all of his events and all his gear and everything in there. Okay. And then you're going to pick a stage, which determines the map tile you use, plus the stage deck. And the stage deck functions like its own little character over there. It's got all these events that go on. It's got objectives that come out. And the whole point of the game is for us to defeat the boss before he get, completes his objectives. So he's going to go around doing, and th those are always different per whatever stage you play. Mm -hmm. For example, this stage is called Gone Ballistic, and the boss is trying to collect a bunch of weapon boxes and get out of the board. So if he collects too many, you lose. But you can also pick them up yourself and do more damage with them. Okay. <laughs> so All right. <laughs> So the, the gameplay is uh, pretty simple. It, it plays a lot like um, Sentinels of the Multiverse in a way. It's The product model is kind of set up the same way because it's a fixed deck modular game. Okay. But it's got dice, obviously. It's got miniatures. Yep. So everyone's going to have their hand of cards, and they're going to be uh, attack cards, tactic cards that go into play that give you more options, kind of boost your character up, and um, ability cards that give you all kinds of different crazy abilities. So on your turn, you're just going to do your threat phase, which is drawing an enemy card, mm -hmm. putting it into play in your threat area. Usually it's going to be a minion, which spawns on the board. So you put them at the nearest uh, entry space. And they'll also have defense tokens that kind of mess with how you interact with them. And then you're going to move around. You're going to play cards, attack them, and defeat them. And you want to work your way toward the boss and take him out, because the boss has always got a lot higher health, and his minions pile up. So you got to kind of balance doing damage to the boss and taking out his minions at the same time. Yeah. So. Excellent. Uh, what I, I missed the name. Oh, What's sorry. This yeah, I should probably mention the name. Yes. So it's called uh, Street Masters: Rise of the Kingdom, and it's actually okay. on Kickstarter right now. It's seeking funding. It's actually funded. We're just getting some more stretch goals right now. It's got about I think eight more days left. Okay. So and these well. are the final dice that you're going to uh, be using. Icons changed a little bit, but they're somewhat similar. We they're, changed some of the. Uh, they're quite icons. shiny. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty nicely done. And, uh, the, all these miniatures, these are prototypes, but they're pretty similar to what they're going to be. They're just the resin versions right now. So, so if yeah. people want to find out more information about either of these games, where do they go? So this Blacklist Games is a website. I believe it's blacklistgames.com. Okay. Um, we might have to Google that. I'll double check the uh, site. But um, it's also on Kickstarter right now. You can just search for Street Masters Rise of the Kingdom. Okay. Um, Awful Fantasy can be found on Twitter and Facebook. Their handle is Awful Fantasy. They have a lot of followers. They're pretty pretty easy to find. And um, these these game this game should be in retail. This should be um, once it's funded, it should be hitting retail probably early in next year. 
All right, Brady, thank you very much for spending some time with us. Thank you for having me, appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Hello and welcome back to our coverage of Origins 2017. I'm Eric Summerer here with Mike and Lindsay from Dog Might Games, and we're showing off something very, very pretty. Thank you. Uh, I've been drooling over <laughs> the shots on Kickstarter of all the different wood pieces. This is called the Component Collector. Tell us about it. Um, it's a product that we just came out with. It's on Kickstarter right now. Um, there's about 15 different wood types available and over 12 different tile designs. Wow. And the cool part about it is, 
is that there's a little dot on the top of every tile, uh -huh. and you can arrange it however you like. They're all magnetic. They're all magnetic. That's a game in itself. It is. It is. It is. It's incredibly addictive and annoying while you yeah. play at the table. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's the most annoying person. product you can buy on Kickstarter <laughs> right now. Uh, all right, so so where, what was the inspiration for this? Uh, um, we play a, we play a lot of games. We actually play in the wood shop every week, and it's a mm -hmm. messy place. And we needed to yep. stay organized. Okay. As all of the components from all the games ended up all over the shop. So we thought about how we're we going to organize them on the table. And yep. this is the like the twelfth iteration of what we came up with, and we think it works really well. And so mm -hmm. it stores in this. I mean, this like looks like a coaster set. Yep. Yeah, uh, it is. In, yeah. in your dining room, and uh, it's got the nice coasters, yes. yeah. the leather strap around <laughs> mm -hmm. it. Um, and then when you order it, you can get any combination of these. Correct. Yep. Trays. Yes, it's entirely customizable. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what what are the different trays we're looking at? Um, we're looking at the square well right here, which is probably the most popular. It holds about over forty standard size counters. Okay. Or tokens. And they're they're sort of curved sides, so the, you can grab yep, them and, curved and sides pull so them the out. Tokens come right out. We have round wells, card holders. This is called the quad that holds smaller tokens. We have coin wells. And one of the really cool things is on the Kickstarter right now, we're taking comments and suggestions about what tiles the backers want to see. Hmm. So yeah. we've They've already actually added... come up with some really cool ideas right. that we've already implemented yep. as add-ons. Okay. It's really cool. And any of these tiles can get flipped over to become a coaster. <laughs> there you if go. You are, if you are inclined to need a lot of coasters during your gaming, and they all stick together, it, even from collector to collector. So you buy one a year from us, and it'll, the tile will connect to the component yeah. collector right. that you already have. Mm -hmm. They all pile up and load into their own rolling tray, which works in line, has magnets on the side as yep. well, and works in line with the rest. And of it. this is can be used as a dice tray. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I've seen you. There's a magnet on the other side as well, mm -hmm. so you could make wrap around. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, stations for yep. everything, and this is this is fascinating. Now, how many different uh, wood types? I think we're up to fourteen or fifteen right now. We have mm -hmm. two more to unlock as stretch okay. goals, which we're hoping to hit. That's Zeracote right here is kind of the highest stretch goal that we have. This is one of the rarest woods in the world. Oh boy, um, Bacote we just unlocked, so that's available. And the price sort of depends on which Absolutely. wood you're exactly. going to go for, yep. depending. Yeah. You know, this one is is on the higher end, yep. uh, right. and then. What, so what does it range as far as price goes? We start at $44 for the classic, okay. and that comes with eight preset tiles. Any tier above that, you get to choose which tiles you want. So it goes from 44 to 49 to 55, all the way up to the Zeracote, which is probably going to be $200. Okay. So yeah. definitely for you know the rarefied. The live in Rosewood does not cost the same as a regular ash. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that, and the, that's good though. I mean, yeah. it gives, gives people options. <laughs> yes. So whatever you, it's going to fit your room, yep. whatever's going to fit your budget. Yep. That, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Really Excellent. Now, you also hinted that uh, you had something else you wanted to announce. Yeah, we announced it on the Kickstarter. It was kind of a secret stretch goal that was that we know about in-house, but uh, we're mm -hmm. getting back into the game business as well. Excellent. So we've yep. produced two games already. That was kind of early in Dogmite's career, and uh, we stole Lindsay from another yes. company, and she's going to be our game developer from now on. Yeah. So we're looking at a couple months, probably three, four months. Yeah, from so on Kickstarter in three, four months. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have more details coming soon. Yep. And anyone who backs on Kickstarter is available to play test for us. Ah. So mm -hmm. if you back. OK. Can you share any details of what type of game we'll be looking at first? Yes, it's a party game that is has a very diehard vibe in it. Okay. So there's going to be some hostages. Hostages may or may in a not party be a game. bomb. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hostage party. The hostage party. is that we capture people and make them play our game. But <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Mike, Lindsay from Dogmite Games, thank you very much. This is mm -hmm. the Component Collector, and you can find it on Kickstarter right now. Thanks for watching.
Hey folks, we're waiting for Dog My Games to uh, step on over to the Q&A table. No rush, no rush. Yeah. Uh, we are about to... Hi, my name's Sam. What's your name? Mike. Mike. Nice to meet you, Mike. Uh, we have just a few questions from our uh, watchers. So uh, first off, what sort of things do you guys are you guys thinking about doing for, for future projects uh, and that type of stuff? Gotcha. Um, first off, we're going to release a new game in three or four... We're going to release a game actually in three or four months okay um, after that as far as wood projects go we have probably five ideas that we're batting around right now um, I see DM screens yes. is there we're probably not gonna go into DM screens right now okay uh, we're gonna go more board game oriented as far as okay. we've done a lot of RPG stuff thus far so I think we're gonna try and move into the board game market a little bit more. okay dice towers are definitely an option cool um, Deck boxes, yeah. Deck boxes too. Yep. Okay, very good. Um, can you store the components in the in the uh, in the trays? No, it's not. It's not a, a stow and go for one game. Okay. It's it's meant for the table right. for every game that you play. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, do you have any pieces that can integrate with wood uh, board game tables that are coming out, like from BoardGameTables.com or we're, Geek and Sun yeah, or Yeah, we're Rathskellers. actually working on something right now that I. I'm not at liberty to discuss. Okay, all right, good. Well, there you have it. Uh, how many average size tokens can fit into one of those square sections? Uh, we did over 40 okay. is uh, kind of the standard. We're looking, you know, like 16 millimeter tokens, basically. Okay. A little over 40. Uh-huh. All right. Um, and then back here, uh, it says, uh, does do the pieces stack vertically or only horizontally? Uh, uh, just horizontally. Just horizontally? Yep. Okay. Um, or, I don't know what he means. Like, if they can stack, they don't stack upwards going into the sky, but they right. definitely go north, south. They go yeah. in any configuration on any side. Right. Okay. Cool. Um, I think what he was talking about earlier was not just necessarily uh, DM screens, but gotcha. more like simple screens for board games that that just kind of corner off your right. little. Yeah, we've had that discussion on comments as well, and in the comment section of our Kickstarter, uh -huh. and we're looking into that. Um, we try to be as react reactive as we can. We've actually added four or five tiles based on what our backers wanted to see. Okay. Um, but it's a it's a longer process. Something that that that's uh, drastic of a change to the gotcha. system. We take a little longer to develop. So right. We're considering something that goes vertically like that, but we haven't announced it or released it yet. Okay. What about the, um, I, I know that other projects that I've seen in the past mm -hmm. have, that have magnets in them. Yep. Um, how, well, how difficultly, <laughs> how, how difficult is it for, for people who have like those pacemakers and, and that type of thing? Uh, oh. Do those interfere at all? No. No, 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 no. they don't. They're they not have that a very strong. Limited range. Okay. They're, they're strong, but the, the location is very important. Okay. And they're very close. What? They, they only draw to something that's very close to it. Mm -hmm. We're talking like a two-inch kind of pole. Okay, gotcha. All right, good. Uh, let's see. Does Mike think Die Hard is a Christmas movie? Yes. All right, you jerks. <laughs> you guys are jerks. Okay, so the answer is. Lindsay actually thinks it thinks it's the best Christmas. The movie. best Christmas yes. movie. Okay, yes. well. Everybody knows I disagree, <laughs> but thank you, Internet. We appreciate that. Uh, let's see, how about card holders for games like Hanabi? Yeah, we have, um, I think there's three tiles in there right now for cards. One has four slots. It can hold five cards each in okay. each slot. Um, there's combo card holders, and then we have a deck holder that's angled uh -huh. and holds about 30 cards. Okay. So uh, you're, you're talking about going into... Uh, board games, you have one in the pipe already. Yes. Um, what about after that? Have you got any other? What uh, are you we'll looking see how for? How it goes? Yeah. I mean, Lindsay's our game developer, and she's got ideas out for the wazoo. Okay. Yes. 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 <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's. Uh, I think that's about it. Let me just give a real quick check. We already got that one. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that looks like it. That looks like it. So. We appreciate your, your time, Mike. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have a much. good way. Have a good day, and yes. thanks for stopping by. We appreciate it. Thanks, you guys, for your questions. We'll head it back over to Eric in just a few moments.
Hello and welcome back to Columbus, Ohio for our coverage of Origins 2017. I'm Eric Summerer here with Jeff Syedek from Guerrilla Games and you have proudly delivered a giant box of stuff. It is a big box of joy here. Battle, Battle stations. stations. This is the second edition of, right. of a game. This has probably been your biggest hit. Uh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, uh, Lifeboat ha has certainly gotten into more languages, but that's a little easier to translate than this bomb of cardboard we have here. <laughs> so, when I, we released Battle Stations in 2004, uh, my brother Jason said, I want to make it a treasure box full of stuff. But that was before Kickstarter yeah. and before we could do plastic. And now okay. we got this new edition. We finally got the Kickstarter backers. Thank you. So we could really make this thing happen. So I, I have to show this. This is the this is the the boards and the counter sheets. But yes. that is a gigantically. Let's put that in the close-up camera right there. That is a thick pile of cardboard. Yes. And that's all in this box. This is the the maps as well as the counters for this yep. game. Counters and then like modules. This is a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, and if you played the original edition, I love the old art, and the new art uh, is just even better. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve Hamilton, uh, the guy who did a number of other projects, I said, "Oh, I want this guy for my art," and we got him, so it was great. So, okay, so let's say we've never heard of of Battle Stations before. What what's the system? Battle Stations is the game of heroic starship adventure. You get to be a character uh, on board on board a ship. So you know, let me let me steal one of these here. Take one of those. So your character is going to be actually in the modules. You punch these modules out and rearrange them, and so your characters are going to run around on the ship, and you'll have things to... Uh, uh, so each of the players has a character, and you'll have like a sample character card. These are the, the sample characters that you'll start with. And eventually, because it's an ongoing campaign, you'll uh, transfer your character over to a character sheet, and you'll be able to track your character's progress as you get more special abilities, treasure, and equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, the nuts and bolts of it are that you're on a starship, and you're, the enemy, is, uh, it's all versus one type of game, the enemy controls the enemy starship or the navigation hazards, whatever else is going on okay. in the galaxy. And uh, so each mission is really self-contained. There's a mission objective, destroy that ship, or find this antidote, or decode this thing, or get out of this uh, navigation hazard. And uh, so it's, it's like a board game because it's very specific mission objectives. Yep. But it's like a role-playing game because your character continues and there's also campaign rules so that you can go and, and fight a, a campaign. Wow. Uh, so cooperative against one player. Yes. Um, and you can play it. Uh, I've actually been playing it a lot lately. Uh, cooperative without it, uh, unmoderated. Uh, my friend okay. Neil Softy helped me develop some rules for so you could play without any... Uh, without a referee that everybody sort of collectively decides, oh, well, now the enemy's going to do this. And uh, there's, hmm. a, there's a flow chart for the things they do. OK. Now I see you've got, there's a rule book. Yes. And then there's this gigantic tome. Yes. So the 32-page rule book that comes with the boxed game, this guy uh, has everything you need to play. And by page 11, you're playing, and it brings you into the missions and teaches you as you go along. OK. And once you have played this, you're going to say, wow, but what about uh, upgrades and cyberware and a uh, whole bunch of, there's missions in there from uh, James Ernest and Richard Garfield and wow. J.R. Honeycutt, just everybody I could find throughout the industry, they said, sure, I'll give you a mission idea, and we wrote something up. Huh. Okay, so, and, and that's all included in the box? No, this is not in the box. This is, this is, okay. this is the 300, but <laughs> after you punch all those counters, uh, then the book will fit then in the box. Then there's room, okay. All right. Um, how soon can we see it? Where do we get it? It is, I actually only have a few here at the show to show off and give to my fabulous friends at the Dice Tower. <laughs> uh, I saw Tom run off with one earlier, <laughs> yes. So uh, we've got, uh, but it will be in stores uh, in July. Okay. And it'll be officially debuting at, uh, at Gen Con. Uh, price for the box, price for the book? Box game is $100 and the book is $60. Okay. And it's, uh, I, I am really proud of it, really. Oh. It, I know you've been working on it for a while. I mean, you, this has sort of been brewing for, yeah. for some time. Uh, so it's, it's nice to see the smile on your face yes. holding the finished, yes, finished it's, it's product. Good. It, I still don't have it all out there yet, so it, we're not out of the woods yet, but it's about to get on boats. All right. Uh, GorillaGames.com? Uh, GorillaBoardGames.com. GorillaBoardGames.com. Yes. Remember, GorillaBoardGames.com for Battle Station's second edition. Jeff, thank you very much for spending some time with us. Thank you. Thanks for watching.
of these. All right, Jeff just sat down at the Q&A table. So what we're going to do here is uh, I need you to hold that up. All right. And we've got just a few questions that our listeners have shot us uh, concerning battle stations. And uh, we want you to get uh, uh, just the answers for them, basically. Uh, first one, which is really inconsequential, but how much does the game weigh? Uh, it weighs four kilos for this, and the book weighs, uh, I think, two kilos. So six altogether. Yes. All right. But the, the book is sold separately, yes, right? Yes, book yeah. sold separately. Okay. Now, that kind of leads me into a, a, another question. How much of the rule book, this rule book, is like fluff? How much of it is actual rules? Um, well, I'd say it's maybe 30% fluff. It, it's really, uh, it's actual rules, but it's actual rules that you don't need. Yeah. Unless you've got them. Like, there's rules for a disintegrator, which really you don't need unless you're about to get disintegrated. Then all of a sudden, <laughs> it's really important to know how that works. <laughs> right. Yeah, you kind of want to know how a disintegrator works, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Um, now, is there going to be a PDF version of the book available? Yes, there will be a PDF version available. Uh, absolutely. We, I just, the day before I left, I got our uh, layout guy, Dan Blanchett, to uh, work on the, the PDF, and he said he'd have it ready tomorrow, but th tomorrow was yesterday, and I'm gone, so I'll gotcha. have it next week. Understood. Okay. Um, how much, how, how does combat work? Uh, because we'd, we had a limited time frame over there, so... Just a brief rundown of how that works. Sure. So uh, the, the sequence of play is that the ships move on the hex map, mm -hmm. and then the characters, based on their speed, and then the characters take their actions. So their actions could be to turn the ship by taking a helm action, spending helm power, mm. or it could be to uh, shoot the cannons at an enemy ship, uh, or it could be to shoot somebody on board your ship. So if you're going to shoot somebody on board your ship, you're going to make a com everything in the game is two dice, and uh, add your skill against the target number. So if somebody has a human as a target number of eight, it means you have to roll an eight or better on two dice to hit him. Okay. So if you have at least a one or two skill, you're likely to hit very often. Okay. Uh, if you're in your profession, you get to re-roll one of the dice. So Marines get to re-roll combat, pilots get to re-roll uh, piloting, and, and et cetera. So if you want to shoot uh, another ship, the difficulty is the distance in hexes plus double their speed. So if they're going speed three and they're six hexes away, you're going to need a 12 to hit them. Okay. So you'll, uh, and you, again, you're going to add your combat skill to that. So a okay. Marine's going to be good at that. And something really important for the game is that everybody can do everything. Okay. So if, if your pilot happens to be dead uh, and you're the Marine, you've got zero piloting skill, you might need a 12 to turn the ship, but you've got to go try to do that. And Got one it. of the, my favorite mechanics in the game is luck, where uh, you have a limited num number of luck, five plus your ranks, so you start with six, and that's the number of times you can reroll something during the game. Okay. So at the beginning of the game, if you get hit for 12 points of damage, you know, two dice that come up each sixes, uh, you're probably going to spend luck on, luck on that because it would knock you out. Yeah. So you'll spend a few luck points and knock that damage down to where it's survivable and then go find somebody with a med kit. Uh, but what that does is it creates the drama of now my luck is running low as opposed to some game where you just get hit for 12 points and you're out. Yeah. So I, I, I really like that. And then if you get hit again for 12 points later and you're out of luck, well, you're just out of luck, but by then it's a, it's a dramatic, you know, right. end, to the, end to a combat. Gotcha. Okay. Well, thank you for that. Uh, now, how much of a... Uh, is there a story element, and how deeply will it go in the game? The, uh, the story is... Yes, the, the story is... It, I tried to make it not generic, but but it, it hears what people are have coming from. I had people say, oh, was Firefly a big influence? And the, the short answer is no, mm -hmm. because as soon as we went to press with the first uh, edition, uh, we we got the Firefly C DVDs and watched them and said, oh my God, this is great. This would have been a great influence. Right. Uh, but it sort of seeped in by the time we did second edition. Gotcha. So there's... Uh, but the idea is that anything that happens in a science fiction universe, you can build your campaign around that. Gotcha. And, uh, so there, the story here is that there's a galactic, galactic civil war going on. There's a, uh, and you can take either side of it. Uh, you can say that the, the Republic is evil, or you can say that the rebellion is evil, and whichever way you want to play it, okay. you're on the right side. All right, cool. Uh, so what's a good player count for somebody just starting off? I, it's it's really optimized for about four or five players and an enemy. Okay. Um, you can certainly. I've been playing some campaigns with uh, two or three of us, and it's a little rough because if you don't have all of the roles filled, you get to fill them with bots, and the bots just have sort of minimal skills. Gotcha. Uh, the mission difficulty is scaled based on the uh, the ranks of the players and the number of players. So uh, the the missions will get easier, 
but it's still pretty hard to manage a ship when you don't have somebody that's pumping the engine. Gotcha. And Understood. All, all right. And then what about campaign mode? How does it handle uh, players dropping in and out and all that kind of stuff? I, each of the missions is really modular. There's okay. a mission, go here and do that. And so if somebody's going to have the misfortune of having an anniversary next Sunday, which is our battle stations day, <laughs> then their character is on shore leave uh, while the rest of us are off on the camp, uh, off on the mission. Okay. So uh, instead of having that great engineer that's always cranking for a lot of power, we're going to have a bot in there that can pump a little bit of power. Gotcha. And, and the bot's not going to uh, raise the mission difficulty the same way that awesome character will. Cool, gotcha. All right, and then uh, what are the, I know there's probably a lot, but what are the basic differences between advanced and core rules? Uh, so, the, you mean the, the original core? Well, the uh, I'll, the rules in the box are basically a little simpler, and they're missing the uh, upgrades and cyberware and that sort of stuff that, that advances it. Um, and then I think the question might have been the original rules uh, okay. from the original book. Maybe so. And, and the, the thing there is that ships got a lot faster. Okay. That uh, One of the things I learned in playtesting was that when people ask you the same question, when 10 different people ask you the same question and you always have to say, no, no, that's not the way it works, they're actually right and you're wrong. Gotcha. So uh, people would, I would say, here's your ship's speed, and they'd say, that's how many hexes we go each phase, right? And I used to have to say, no, there's this chart that you look at to see yeah, where you go. And right. now I say, yeah, your speed is how fast you go. That's, that's right. the way it works. So ships move a lot faster. So before, you literally move maybe 20 hexes over the course of a whole six phase or 12 phase mission. Yeah. Now uh, you're going to move that many phases, you know, five or six phase, or three or four phases, hexes a phase. So yeah. ships are a lot faster. Um, uh, ship size is now figured based on one third of the modules okay. instead of again a sort of weird formula thing yeah uh, that's uh, and uh, the ship uh, the main thing is we went to one inch squares and so it's now compatible with any one inch minis so okay. people really like that that's good uh, but but the rules there haven't changed so if you're playing with the original book you could actually get the PDF or, or the new book and and it, you're not gonna have the beautiful yeah. new art but I love the old art. And, right and it's, it's still fully you know the squares are in the same place yeah so everything's compatible and yeah one of the things we I mean we played this years ago when we when we all lived in Korea and one of the things I remember thinking while we were playing is, is man, this needs miniatures. Yes. And now you've got them. So oh, I, yeah. I just thought that was really neat. I, well, that's what we wanted. And uh, really, it wouldn't be possible without the help of Kickstarter and yeah. the backers out there that said, yeah. hey, yes, go ahead and make this great. And uh, we were really able to do it. And thanks to uh, Joey Bigger was... Uh, he did his game Chaosmos, and he did it so beautifully that I said, hey, I need your help on, on my thing. And, and, that's cool. Uh, really happy. With Collaboration that. is always so, good. All right. Well, thanks so much, Jeff. Thank you, for Sam. For stopping by. We appreciate it. We're looking forward to giving that one a whirl. All right. Uh, good luck. So thank you guys for your questions. And uh, we're going to send it back over to Eric in just a few moments. So there's a guy whose first name is Gorin who was staying in my room last night. Oh, yeah? just, it was just weird because I, I saw your card and he was there and I said, Warren, wait, no, that's not right. No, I didn't yeah. see yeah. that. <laughs> All right, well, thanks, guys. Okay, good see
Hello and welcome back to Columbus for our coverage of Origins 2017. I'm here with Nick from Indie Boards and Cards and uh, we've got two games to talk about. The first of which has really cool illustrations yeah, that we were, we were chatting about before we started. It's called Trickster Champions of Time. What yeah, do we so, do? So Trickster is a, uh, it's a trick-taking game. Okay. Uh, designed by Daniel Solis, who also designed Kodama, Ball ah. the Ball, several other games I'm yep. sure you've heard of and or played. Um, and the, the difference in the trick, in this being a trick-taking game, one of the big hooks is that every time you play the game, you can play with a different combination of cards. So basically, right. the game comes with 14 different character cards, and the character cards exist in eight suits. Okay. So the game comes with 112 cards. All right. So you'll pick seven of those 14 cards to make the deck and okay. shuffle them up. So everyone's going to be dealt a certain amount of cards based on player count, and then you're going to start the trick with the leader. So it's a different kind of trick-taking game because the rules for the trick change based on what the trickster does. So normally the leader kind of dictates the rules. You know, like when you're playing a trick-taking game, the leader kind of makes right. you follow suit. Yeah. So what happens in Trickster is the leader will play a card, and whenever you play a card, you activate its ability that's shown on the bottom okay. here. right here. Right? And, and then the trickster gets to decide the rules for the trick. So the trickster will either play a card that matches the character, matches the suit, or matches neither. Okay. So when you play a card, you could play this purple card, and now yep. everyone would have to play purple cards. All right. If they can. You could play this soldier card, because these are both soldiers, yep. and that, so everyone would have to play soldiers if they can. Right. Or you know you could play one that is neither. Okay. In which case, everyone would have to play cards that, does, that don't match what's already in the pot. All right. And then everybody has to activate their ability when they play it. Okay. If you can't follow suit, you bust, and you take all the cards and put them in front of you in your tableau. Okay. And you're going to score these later, and you don't want points. So the concept is that you're a trickster, we're all trickster gods, and we're manipulating all these heroes from different universes, that's what the suits represent. Okay. And uh, you're trying to be the person that gets least caught, I guess, have the least amount of trouble points. Right. So you're just trying to make it through with the least amount of heroes that have caught on to you. Okay. At the end of a hand, each player, the player who has the most cards of each suit is going to discard those cards, you're not going to score those. Okay. So there's a little bit of the shoot the moon shoot aspect the moon. Yeah. yeah, if you get stuck. And all the cards will, the abilities typically let you manipulate the cards in your hand, the cards in your tableau, exchange cards from the discard pile, exchange cards with other people. So there's a lot of opportunities to kind of gain majorities in certain areas with the effects that you have. Hmm. So it's kind of a, it's a, it's a very simple game to play because really you're just playing a card and resolving like a sentence of text. It's not right. hard. Okay. And then you're just matching suits and, and, yeah. and uh, heroes. But it's, it's got kind of a lot of layers to it as you try to manipulate the way that things, because the rat hand ends when, as soon as somebody runs out of cards and everybody else puts their cards into their tableau. So you could look like you don't have a lot of yellows, like you only have one and somebody else has three, and you have three yellows in your hand and you flop them down, now all and of a sudden you're not scoring anything and they're scoring three, three points. three yellows, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's played over three hands. The, each hand takes about 10 minutes to play. Okay. It's, you play with the same deck, all the three hands, so typically in the first hand you're kind of feeling out what the different combos are and how they right. interact together. Yeah, yeah. And in the second or third hand you're like, oh sure. yeah, that's really neat, I figured this out, etc. And, yeah. and a lot of the cards have a really interesting interplay. Very cool. I love the cards. illustrations on these. There's, um, I don't know if the girl's out here, but there's, there's she a girl the holding a teddy bear on the side of the box. Yeah, that, I think she's still in the box. Like a, but, yeah. a magic girl, and uh, you know, just really neat looking heroes. There's a, some lady with a screwdriver. What's she going to do with the screwdriver? Uh, I, I think, don't know. I think she's taking off her handcuffs. She's a sketchy one. Well, all right yeah. then. Uh, Trickster Champions of Time, how soon can we get this one? This will be out in a month. It'll be here at the con, and okay. it'll be out in retail in a month. Very cool. Now next, we have a, a slightly larger game. Yes. Called Delve. So this is Delve. Oh, I didn't realize there Delve is a game that's designed by uh, Richard Launius and okay. Pete Sheary. Um, and we did a lot of development on this one, and what you come to expect from Launius is kind of a you know a really immersive experience. You know, mm -hmm. a, a, so a we have a whole experience. bunch of tiles. You have a whole bunch of tiles. You're going to be building out a dungeon. All right. Okay. So it's kind of like Carcassonne in that you. You're going to be adding these tiles to the dungeon. And when you okay. add them, you're going to have a hand of three tiles, and it's, they're going to be hidden to the other people. And when it comes around to you, you're going to place one of these tiles on the dungeon. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take one of your delvers. So everybody in this game plays a different race of characters. So you could be a cobalt or a sellsword or a wraith. 
uh, or okay. uh, forest folk, so elves. So you're going, everybody has a similar set of Delvers. So everybody has yep. five Delvers. Four of them are the same, and then everybody has a duplicate of one of the four Delvers, but it's different. So I'll have okay. two thieves, and you'll have two leaders. Basically. All right. Um, so when you place a tile, you're going to put a guy down on it, face down. And then I'll take my turn, I'll place a tile, I'll place a guy on it, etc. We'll go back and forth. Just like in Carcassonne, when, when an area closes, so now you can't add any more to this room, right. you're going to resolve the room. Okay. okay. So, but unlike Carcassonne, we're delving in a dungeon, so we're going to fight over the spoils that are in the room. <laughs> All right. So if I was in the same room with you, we would roll these dice based on the delvers that we have in the room. So okay. you have a leader, you'd roll a purple and a red. And these were placed secretly. You had them face yeah, down exactly. when we went in. Okay. And I would roll a brute if I was in the same room as you. So I would roll three white dice, and you would roll these two, and we would purple mark it on this red. track. We have little cubes that you'd keep track okay. of on this track. And then the winner... Wow. would receive half of the gold bags in the room. So there are four gold bags here, and then there are little gold bag cards. The gold bag cards range from one to three points, and you're just trying to collect the most amount of points. Okay. Um, there are, you know, more more of the ones than there are the twos and threes, right. et cetera. But yeah, so here, here are the gold cards. There's lots of little So if little I won, cards. I'd get, there's four bags in here, I'd get two cards. You get two cards. Face and, down. What does second place get? Half of the remaining. Gotcha. So I would only get one, yep. and then the remaining would just be stranded. Um, there are also treasure chest icons, like on this one. So if you close a room with a treasure chest icon, the winner gets all the treasure chests. Yep. So the second place doesn't get any. The treasure chests are worth points, just like the other ones, but also a lot of them have abilities when you collect them. So some of them will give you experience points. Experience is a resource that you can use to kind of break some of the rules in the game or get an advantage in combat. Okay. Every different faction in the game has a, an ability they can use an experience for that's unique to them. Um, so that's what happens if you are in a room with multiple players. Right. Right. So in that room that we just looked at, you, uh, you're in the room by yourself. And in that case, there's nobody to fight you over the loot, so right. you have an encounter. Ah. So we're going to draw these one of these encounter cards, if I can open the package. <laughs> oh. These custom dice are neat. This is what they're going to look like? That This is a production copy. Okay. So we must be close on this. As far it as is on its way. It, it has the same delivery date as Trickster. It's going okay. to be out in a, in a month. All right. So, yeah, they're big, big, chunky custom dice. And there are a lot of them. Well... So we'd be having an encounter. What sorts of things would we, would we find in Well, let's that, just uh, read the back one. Yeah, let's read the back the one. The one that I let's can access. Let's do that one. Okay, so this one says, so what, what's going to happen in the encounter is you're going to read a narrative paragraph that's okay. going to tell you what's going on. And then I'm going to read you two options, and I'm going to read you the titles of the options, but I'm not going to tell you what the results of the options okay. are. Okay, so it says a crazed goblin wielding two slagsmith daggers pounces from the shadows. Lose the loot or lose your guts. Mm. So your options are do you lose the loot or do you fight the goblin? Well, I fight the goblin for sure. Right. So then the, the card, whenever it says fight, that means you're going to have to battle something. Right. So you're going to roll dice for sure. It shows you that the goblin rolls two purple dice. You would roll whatever dice on the guy that you have in the room is. Okay. So in the case of your leader, you'd have a red and a purple red one. And purple. The dice are all weighted differently, but the, the white ones are the worst one. These are better at collecting treasure. These are better at attack. Okay. And then it has a result here that says, if you succeed, collect one additional gold card. So if you beat him in battle, you would get all of the treasure in the room. Plus one more. Plus one more in this case. And if I failed? If you failed, you would get half the treasure in the room. Okay. And if there was a, a fail result, you would also get some sort of penalty right. for the fail result. Excellent. Uh, so you said this is coming at the end of the month? Uh, end of with, July. End of it's July. about a month from now. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. It's called Delve. Uh, let's grab a co uh, the, the box there so we can show that off because sure. I think that's been off camera. Um, Delve, ta-da, which is coming at the end of July from Richard Lonius and Pete Shirey. Yeah, it's a, it's a good game. There's a lot of stuff in this box. It's jam-packed and it's 40 bucks. It plays in about an hour. It plays two to four. It's a really fun, funny experience. The the encounters are, they're kind of, not really slapsticky, but they're kind of tongue-in-cheek for the most cool. part. You're, there's one encounter where you, like, fight three barbarians all named Ragnar, and their <laughs> war chant is to yell Ragnar at you and, and run toward you. So <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, so if, if people are looking for info on Delve or Trickster, where should they go? Uh, BGG. You can check out their BGG links. There's, okay. there's all kinds of stuff in there for them. Perfect. Nick, thank you very much for spending some time with us. No problem. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching.
All right, hey guys, thanks so much for all the questions. We are here with Nick uh, at the Q&A table, and uh, we're gonna run through. It's uh, the after party. Any, the after party yeah, table. pretty much, yes, yeah. yeah. the after glow, yeah. So uh, basically, first off, I'm just gonna go down the list here, so it's right here in case if you see anything you don't want me to ask, you just go, uh-uh, you know, or something like that. I'm gonna take them all. All right, cool. All right, so what's the best player count for Trickster? Uh, I think four plus. Two and three are my favorite. It's a trick-taking game. You know, you want more people. Yeah. Seven might be a little slow, but four to six is is great. Okay. All right. Yeah, four to six great. is the sweet spot. All right. Cool. Do you have any plan, uh, expansions planned for Trickster? Uh, you'd have to ask the designer of that one. We don't. Or for Trickster, I'm sorry. Yeah, Trickster. Yeah, we have other content for it. Okay. Um, we actually have a little expansion pack, um, and it might come out. It kind of depends on the popularity of the game. It's one okay. of those. We sell out real quick. We'll, we'll see what happens. Pump some expansions in it. Okay. We have the content. For it. Cool. Uh, what about any future expansions for the Resistance? That's the one I was speaking ahead on. Okay. Uh, you have to act as a designer on that one. We don't okay. have anything currently in the pipeline. Okay, yeah. nothing. All right. Uh, any news for Path of Light and Shadow? Yeah, I just got some of the samples back for the models and the dice. The dice are awesome. The gold paint on the black chunky dice looks yeah. amazing. Okay. Yeah, and all the models look good. So we're and we actually just uploaded all the print files on Monday. So okay. we're in really good, really good shape to get this thing for Essen. All right. So. Cool for Essen. Yep. Did Beth Sobel do the artwork for Trickster? She did indeed. She did? Good eyes. There you go. Good eyes. Uh, when can backers for Delve expect to get their copies? I would say the next two to three weeks. Two to three So weeks. it should be arriving to Amazon in the next like week or so, I believe. Uh -huh. So yeah, I, I would say by the end of the month. Okay. All right, cool. Uh, are we going to see any more for the uh, Grifters? There is some stuff in the works plan for Grifters. Okay. Yep. Any more? Any more info than that? I, I think you'll see it come out next year. Okay. Uh, a, a Kickstarter campaign for it would probably be next year. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, anything new for uh, Dragon Slayer? We don't have anything planned new for Dragon Slayer. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And uh, what about Aeon's End War Eternal? Any updates for that? I just signed off on all of the proofs for that. They are printing some of it now, and they're going to start printing the rest of it in the next couple of days. Okay. So, I think we are technically about a week behind on that, but I will still have, we'll still be delivering in the ballpark of, of Gen Con. Okay. Um, and then I think the last one we have here is will Snowdonia get reprinted? Mm, I would say probably not. Probably not. Probably not. All right. Sorry. Not, All nothing right. for sure, but. Let me not. just do a quick uh, scan, scan back up and uh, just want to make sure we didn't miss anything. Uh, let's see. I don't understand this question. Maybe you do. Sure. Will there ever be any hope to have the original Nemesis have the update treatment that the rest of Eon's End received? I would say that's that's pretty unlikely. I mean, we're we we like the idea. We're fully behind the idea that each Nemesis kind of comes with its own block of history, and that's okay. what shapes the way that the mats look. All right. So I would say if the next Eon's End expansion, the mats will probably look different because it'll be another time frame. Here's a slightly interesting question. Sure. When are, uh, when, <laughs> I don't know, that's that's presumptive, but a big board game, uh, is that in the possibility? And I guess big is subjective. I think Path of Light and Shadow is a big game. Yeah, I mean, that's it is. Come that's with that's a, a big a game, right. plus dollar price tag. There's a lot of, and there's a lot of stuff in the there box, is too. Stuff. Yeah, there's so, like 100 plastic bits or more. Yeah. <laughs> And, right, and you know, three hundred cards. Yeah, and so I guess board. I guess that would be the answer to that question. It's the biggest thing that we've done. Right, you know, like Aeon's End was the biggest thing before that. It's all cards. It's a deck builder, but I mean, it's still a big kind of pricey game at fifty yeah. bucks. With no, tons yeah. of expansions. True. So, so I guess I guess to path for sure. Cur cur to curve that, I guess, is that going to be the biggest? Or are you going to try to look bigger even after that? Or are you going to maybe? Try to find a comfort spot. I would say we're open to looking at all kinds of games, right. but we definitely know that small boxes are the sweet stuff. Everybody knows indie boards and cards, for Coup, Resistance. Right. Flashpoint's a little bigger, but still just right. as accessible as those games. Right. You know? So for us to, to jump in and do something as big as Path of Light and Shadow with the complexity and component yeah. count, that was definitely something new for us. But okay. we, we spent tons of time developing that game. That game is totally done. It's yeah. a great game. But um, I, I would say, we don't really have anything in the pipeline that's that big, but I'm going to be meeting with tons of people yeah. over the next couple of months. So. Okay, cool. All right, uh, let's see. One last. Yep, that looks like it's about it. Awesome. Thank you guys for your questions. We appreciate it. We're going to head it back over to Robert Geislinger uh, in just a few moments. Thanks so much, Nick. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming by. See you guys later.
We're good? Can you see that? Yes, you can see that. All right, cool. We're live, all right? You are on. All right, folks, we're back in Columbus for Origins 2017. I'm here with Justin from Fireside Games. Hi, and everybody. We are taking a look at Kaiju Crush. Yes. This so what is, do we have here? We have a giant city smashing game. You are going to be one of four giant monsters in this game, and your goal is to smash a city for points, as it always is. Uh, I've only put out a few of the tiles. There's actually a lot more. The game goes up to a seven by six arrangement for a four player game. Okay. This is just to give you a sample of what the board will look like. These tiles are changed out randomly, and then each monster is going to have a starting tile. So here's our robot guy over here. Here's our blue guy, Draximus, over there. And they've got what amounts to a crater. It may be a little hard to see on screen there, but this is a smashed building. It's just the remnants and it's in his color. Now the goal of the game is to make points by moving around, smashing buildings, fighting other monsters, and completing objectives that are out for everybody to get to. Move these guys out of the way. Okay, so as you move along, you're just trying to complete these objectives? Complete objectives okay. and get points, because every building you smash is worth points. There's a couple of tricks, of course. It's not that easy. Um, you can never go back to a building once it's been smashed. So this board is going to get harder and harder to move around, and your movement is limited. The way it works is on your turn, you got two things you're going to do. You're going to move based on movement cards, and then you're going to do whatever it is. Either smash a building, maybe fight a monster. So movement is based on these awesome little movement cards. Hold it up there for that one. <laughs> um, and it has a different pattern on it. So in this case, this one moves like a knight in chess. So that's the ability you would have to move. Okay. But you're always going to have two options. The card that's in front of your character and then what we call the shared card. So you can choose which one you want. If you use the shared card, it just stays out there. This is trample, lets you move diagonal. So the way it would work is I would take my guy, I would say, you know what, I want to smash this bridge, it's worth three points. I would smash the bridge, put my token down, or my crater, that was my movement, I used that card, boom, I'm done. Every card is worth points and it's in different groups, kind of like suits. There's four different groups, that comes into some bonus scoring and you just plain want big buildings, they're worth big points. So um, there's a bit of set collection as well. A little bit, yeah, okay. you want to be careful on how far you go with that, but yeah, you'll keep that face up. Now here's the trick with movement though, I just explained using the common card. If I'd used leap instead, I would have had to, well first off, I would have ended up in a different place, I would have had to share, so my movement card now becomes the common card. Okay. So they're all gonna come into play eventually. It's a question of do I want my opponent to have access to this card yet or not or do I just really need this one kind of thing so you're balancing a little bit of that moving around um, like I said you're smashing buildings one of the things you're gonna also do is you have a special ability it's a one time per game use that you fire off it's gonna let you maybe move in some crazy pattern it might let you break the rule and go back to one that's been smashed before which is really handy you're also gonna want to watch out for parts Parks are never smashed in the game. Instead, what happens when you land on a park, you immediately go again. And again, you'll always have access to two cards. So you can maybe mix it up halfway, do the same movement twice, okay. but you'll bounce off of a park, get something else, smash it, and claim it. That's all good. And then eventually what's gonna happen, well, as you can see, since you can't go back, it's gonna get harder and harder to navigate right, those, those board strings. Right, it's gonna get harder to even move with those yes, cards. Yes, some of these are gonna get tricky. So what you're gonna wanna do then is probably go fight your opponent. So if you get next to, or the same space with another monster you can fight. There's two different modes. We call it adjacent battle, in which case you're gonna do a battle and get victory points for it. Or if you fight on the same territory, you're still gonna have a battle, winner gets victory points, and then whoever wins is gonna put their marker down. So I might be able to take that away from you if I beat you at this fight kind of thing. Okay. Battles but are pretty crazy in terms of they're, they're pretty simple, uh, but straightforward. Everyone's territory markers are also cards. They have icons on the back and these Icons are used in a simple fight thing. So what would happen is we'd each take the top five from our deck, and it's a hand of cards now, essentially, for you. Don't show it to me, but you can choose. We're going to have five real short battles where we're going to choose one from our hand and play it face up. And what okay. we're doing is we're using a, uh, an, what's called intransitive combat, otherwise known as a modified version of rock, paper, scissors. The way it's going to work is claws will always beat tails. You grab the other guy's tail. Tail will sweep the leg, so a leg beats kick. But a kick will beat a tail. Or, I'm sorry, excuse me. Kick beats a claw. That part's easy. That's rock, paper, scissors. Here's where it gets interesting. Claw, claw tail... Leg. Kick. Yes, Kick. exactly. Monsters, that's what they do. But we have a couple of interesting things. Fire Breath beats all three of those. This is like the ultimate trump card. It beats uh, claw or kick or tail. You know what? I didn't even notice See, that. See, you've got the Fire the Breath. Okay. And then you've got spikes. Now spikes lose to claw or tail or kick, which you think makes them terribly weak, except they're the only one that can beat fire breath. So there is this interesting twist we've done where it's not quite okay. as simple as seems. So combat is literally like, go ahead and uh, grab five, we'll do a quick pretend combat. All right, you pick what you want. You're like, all right, I totally am going to dominate this because I'm coming in with this one. Whenever you're ready, we're going to flip them over. Make sure the audience at home can see. Here we go, one, two, three. 
I have kick up. Oh, tail ah. beats legs. So what happens is I put mine face down. You keep yours face Always up. Always sweep the leg. Always sweep the leg. <laughs> yes. We would do this all five. Whoever wins the most of those five, uh, you know, best out of five, uh, wins the combat. If it's a tie, the defender wins. Okay. And the deal is, what you do then is, it, let's say you won because obviously you're on a roll. You would have totally right. won. You're going to grab one of these at random, these little victory point markers. You wouldn't show me, but it's worth a certain amount of points. Oh, okay. Audience, so those you are. You got a two. Those are hidden. What are the point values on those? One, two, and three. Most of them are one, a few are two, and only a handful are three. Okay. So, Okay. Um, that would have been pretty good to pull it too. Um, you always get victory points, like I said, when you fight, even if I'm just fighting because I'm next to you. But if I had come and attacked you, and let's say I'd won, let's imagine my cards were great and I'd won, I would get your card out into your discard pile, mine goes down. Oh, so you'd reclaim my yes, little crater. Yes, I have now got okay. your crater. Now that's kind of nice in terms of taking that, but the reason that matters are these bonus cards. There's four different bonus, I'm sorry, six in the game, an A, B, C, and D, there's a couple of some of them. In the beginning of the game, you're gonna pick four, and they're double-sided, so there's two different ways to fight, you, two different bonuses, rather, to go after. And the deal is, they usually are based, well, they're based on a couple of different things. A is based on, did I keep all of my smashed areas in one area, or am I spread out all over the board? In this okay, case, so whether or not they're adjacent to yes, each other. Yes, exactly. Area? Like okay. if I had gotten this, I would score that as my largest area and I get four points for that. If I had only scored this, that's only three points, but it's still my largest area. And everybody gets these bonus cards. They're not taken away, they're available okay, so for all players. Okay, so these just stay out. Okay. Exactly. And these are random setup. Exactly. Getting... You're going to get one of each. So that's the one about whether your area is together or the opposite version is spread out, where you get one for each individual clump of smashed buildings. Um, Hoarder is about uh, the, the suits, like I was saying, the group. So there's a commercial group, a power group, a transportation group and a community group. Hoarder is if you have the most of one group, so at the end I'd add up all my symbols and I'd look at how many of those I have. If I have the most, I get bonus points. The opposite is having the fewest. This helps fewest. out the guy who didn't Okay, get so many. the anti exactly. uh, set collection. There. And then we've got shapes. The C group is all about the shapes you made on the board. If you were able to get four in a row, so like if I had done that, I would score a line and that would get me bonus points. The opposite of a line, at least in our world, is a square. <laughs> so if I'd gotten this one up here, I'd have gotten a square. Uh, there's two other versions of that, um, orthogonal and diagonal, which are really hard to do, but very fun. And then D is a little bit different. These cards do go into play when they're scored. So the deal is whoever gets the most of that card in that suit, so I would right now have the most, I would get this card. And it's like a temporary bonus for me. On my turn, I can use this power. Okay. Um, this specific one means that um, I can either use my movement card, the center one, or the person to my left. So I'd have access to all three in a two-player game. Nice. And, and once you use it, then it returns? It stays here until someone stays. gets more cards than me. Oh, okay. So this is going to get passed around. As somebody takes more transportation cards, they're going to take this so card. So once you claim it, it's yours until someone takes exactly, it Exactly, yeah. These ones it's are all about cool. endgame like scoring. This one can be passed around in the middle. Um, so yeah, you're running around, you're fighting, you're going for bonus points, you're keeping an eye on what victory things you want to go for, and the whole thing plays in about, what we said, 45 minutes. That's probably your learning game. It's quicker than that even. Um, it's a fun, fast little filler. Uh, it's going to be out November 1st is the plan on this one, and it is a $30 game, plays uh, uh, two to four players. We're super excited for it. My giant monster, Smashing Cities, what more could you ask for? It's cool, yeah, and I like how you had this one with the square and how it kind of actually played off of this yes, one. Yes, right. In terms of... You'd want to be... So if you get it in this yeah, one... Yeah, it worked pretty I good. Like yes, honestly, square and spread is hard to do. You have to decide, is it worth those three points or do I just want to keep going for individual points? Yeah. Right. And like I said, the special abilities, there's a whole bunch of those and they've been changed up. These ones that get passed around, there's one that lets you draw new special ability cards. There's another one that lets you use anybody else's destroyed territory as if it were a park, so you can bounce off of their okay. territory, so... All and, sorts of fun things. And the board is always set up like this, or is we there do it as a grid. Multiple um, you could do it in different other... shapes, but you do. Uh, we recommend a grid because it lets all the cards work equally. You get some weirdness with some of the other cards, but it, it can it changes on the number of players. It's a six by five for two players, six by six for three, and then seven by six for four players. Okay. So it gets pretty big. And the tiles are all marked. They have a little number on them, letting you know if it's for a three or four player game, so you know which ones to take out. The points get bigger in a, uh, a three and four player game. There's five point cards. Right. Out there right. And stuff. Um, and the movement cards, how many different are oh, there in the there game? there are five total. The idea is there's always one more than there are players in the game because you need okay. that common card. Right. So all five would be in for a uh, uh, four-player game. You'd have that one extra right. one laying out. Very cool, yep. very cool. And you said this is out in November? That's the plan. It is at the factory right now. We are excited. Uh, these uh, these things are half-proof, half-hand cut out. That's why a lot of these cards are sleeve. They're uh, still a bit of a prototype right. there. But and the these... art's all final and everything. Okay. Those are real, the yeah, tiles are real, yeah. We will be demoing this at Origins, and we have some promos we're giving away. Uh, so, you know, you can come get a peek before it's actually out kind of thing. So, that's it. That's Kaiju Crush. Go smash some buildings. All right, folks, that's Justin. Awesome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, sir. And uh, see you guys in a little bit. Sounds good. <laughs>
All right. No, I, I like this. I right? Like the, I like the way this all works together. It's a fun little thing. It's one of those things. It's not really a brain burner, but you got to uh, think. You can't just phone it in. You want to plan for these and stuff. So. Yeah, and, I, I, I like how I like that. I like that combat system. Isn't it fun? Uh, yeah. And it's really interesting because at first you're like, yeah, it's rock paper scissors. I'm like, wait, 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 no. If I do this, you can't have more of those. Hmm. And the the whole. Uh, 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 flames versus spikes thing is really interesting. Uh -huh. And that's the one where when you're watch, it's fun to watch somebody else have combat. They're like, oh, don't let him get another victory point. He comes in with fire breath and somebody throws spikes right, and just right. cheering. So, yeah. so how would you end up in a tie? Or well, I guess if somebody played the same thing, what happens in the, like, yeah. if they... So if you both play the same that. thing, it's basically considered a loss for the players. Right, you just go on right. from there. And so if, if it was the only thing that confused me is you said a tie. I'm like, it's five cards. And I'm like, I yeah. didn't think about the fact you play the same card. Right, right. You're, you, you might play the same card, which is a tie. And then at the end, usually you've got a winner like three to two or something. But right. it, we see ties fairly frequently, and that's where the defender thing comes in. Gotcha. So. All good stuff. All right. Find this bike in here. Yeah, I'm really excited to get this one out. We've been working on it for a while now. It's like, come on, come on, I want to play it. I want to be out there. I want people talking about it. Are these, are these going to be color or anything? No, they're the, the final, real thing like that. Okay, Just make so sure they're, they're super stay. easy to identify. Yeah. Now. We didn't want people getting confused at all. And nice. We did a color demo of it, and it was like, just enough confusion. Let's just keep it super confusion. simple, black and white. Plus, that way, they're really easy to read. Right. Yeah, it's just the symbology. Yeah, and... yeah. Plus, right. for some reason, what I think, we're, we're, we're done. Yeah, we're, we're done. I'm ready to go do some QA. Oh, people might want to look at bits, so maybe I won't seal everything <laughs> up. No, nah, normally in the in the QA. Tell them it's glamouflage. Hello, sir. This is in the front. I don't care. We have this. This one copy right here. It's a demo. Yeah, that's, that is all I have. Great. All right. Hello, Internet. Uh, I've been monitoring the chat and uh, and checking out your questions. We, we're back with Justin uh, from Fireside Hi, Games. Uh, let's start with Kaiju Crush yes. because uh, you know that's what we've been talking about. <laughs> I I missed MSRP and release date. Uh, Thirty dollars MSRP and okay. November first is the okay. plan on this one. Uh, any plans for minis? For not for right Crush? in the first printing. We wanted to make sure we hit the thirty dollars price point, which is why it's all cardboard. But right. if enough people want them we might consider like an add-on pack and if we do an expansion we might put them in there so i'm never gonna say never cause, okay because you know plastics are interesting so. all right the the different monsters how many different monsters are in the box there are four different monsters okay do they have a unique power special they abilities do. yes thank you for reminding me I'm, yeah. I'm a bad salesman yeah each one has a unique uh, power that's related to combat uh for example one of them instead of drawing five cards gets to draw six and then they'll still have a five combat battle but they get one extra card to play with okay uh and then um there's another one i'm trying to think one guy wins on ties of the claw kick or tail Another one wins on ties of the fire breath or spikes. And then the other one, the blue monster, uh, when he draws his hand, if he wants, he can dump as many as he wants to draw a new one. So they're, okay. you're modifying combat. All of them are all the combat abilities are what make them different, though. That's the special thing. Okay. Um, question about hot shots. Yes. It's it printed on the inside cover That's of the right. box. Uh, 
we we've gotten to see it. I've gotten to play it. Yes. I know you've had some production delays. Yes. What, what are you looking at for Hot Shots right now? Hot Shots is finally up and running. It is actually, as we speak, uh, about to go on a boat. Uh, so it's happening. It's good. The minis are amazing. We finally got those figured out. The street date for that we're saying is September 20th. There is a slight chance it might get out a little earlier than that, but we are hedging our bets because lately Customs has been insane. Really? So, yeah, there's been a lot of people getting hung up in Customs. We're going to try and dodge that. Uh, Little, little, little bullet there. But yeah, um, it's coming, it's happening. Uh, it'll definitely be September 20th and maybe even a little quicker. Okay, well, fingers crossed. It's yes, always, always good to under-promise and then over-deliver. That's our plan, because yeah. we already kind of did the opposite version with the first thing. Back. Yeah. But the minis look great. Uh, they're here at the booth. If anybody's at Origins and oh. wants to see Hot Shots, the real finished minis are in our booth. So. Yeah, and because these are, they're fire tokens. Yes, they're plastic um, flames that are a little bit see-through and they look really good if you put a light in the room. Uh, really? Yeah, they're really awesome. You know color. somebody is going to build little tea lights. I know. I'm trying to find little the, the thing is the space underneath is really small you need like an led with like a hearing aid battery kind of thing i'm, I'm, I'm working on it somebody's <laughs> gonna figure it out yeah it, it, if it's not you it's gonna be someone yes. else yes. uh one other question i thought was interesting um you uh published star trek panic along with usaopoly right mm -hmm. um and someone was asking what was what was it like working with the star trek license how how did that constrain what you were able to do um, is there anything you can share about working with an right. IP like that? Yes, and uh, quite honestly, not not blowing smoke anywhere. It was awesome. Uh, CBS was really good to work with, and USAopoly actually handled almost all that. Yeah. I basically threw ideas at USAopoly, and they dealt with CBS. Um, so I didn't have a lot of experience dealing with them hands-on, but they were really excited about everything we pitched. Um, they didn't shoot down anything that we pitched that we were serious about. When we were brainstorming and kind of throwing ideas on the wall, there were a few that were sort of meh on, and we were too. It was like, this is a thought, let's see how it works. Yeah. But no, um, destroying the Enterprise, that was the big one I was sure. Are they going to let us blow the Enterprise I, That was up? going to be my question. Yep. They're, they're going to they, let you blow it up. Go well, for it. You they know, loved it. now that I think about it, they do it a lot yeah, in the movies. Exactly. So. <laughs> I've seen it happen. I have proof. It's canon. Yeah. They, they the, probably didn't have a problem with it that. It wasn't too hard. And like uh, using the, the, the hardest thing really was getting all the licensing and stuff, because there's issues with like um, certain actors own their licenses in different ways and they get different percentages and things. That was something we didn't have to deal with, okay. but there were issues using all the photographs. And, and that was the big thing is we were limited by photos of actual stuff from the original series and there are not a lot of photos of the ships, ironically, that are usable. So that was oh. one of the things where we had to tweak, like the Klingon cruisers, uh, we had to tweak them to make them the boss monsters and try and find every instance where you could tell it was different and it was hard. So. Oh, interesting. Yeah, but I would say the thing about that that sums it up best for me is when we pitched the initial game, they had very few changes and the whole thing of yes, you can destroy the Enterprise happened. Then when we showed them the first working prototype, um, their feedback was this is the best Star Trek game we've ever seen. And I'm like, oh, I, I will take that proudly. So, That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, so that was very good. All right, so uh, if, if folks are looking for more information about Fireside, where do they head? I have no idea. There's just no way to get in contact with us. If no. only. <laughs> if only there was something like the internet. Interweb. A connection with tubes, perhaps, <laughs> would solve this. Yeah. No, uh, firesidegames.com is okay. the website. That's definitely a good source. But if you'd rather stay up with us on Facebook, we do a lot of posts there. We do live videos and stuff. Hmm. Um, we got a pretty active Twitter. Uh, we're on Instagram. We also have a newsletter. If anybody wants to get sort of the behind the scenes info, sign up for that once a month. We'll hit you with what's new and what's hot and let you know like where we're going to be and stuff. So there's a lot of ways to follow us. Um, awesome. Lots of video reviews out there. We have a big active YouTube channel. Channel. We're just about to post a how to play for hotshots actually, probably nope. like next week. So keep okay. an eye on that. Uh, and future conventions for you. You're here at Origins, of yep. course. Yep. Uh, Gen Con. We are doing Gen Con. Yep. yep. Anything else? Um, after that, no. We're we're not going to be at BGG this year, but we are. Oh, and we're, we're, nah, the foreign one's probably not going to work out. So um, we're going to do a tour after Gen Con. We're kind of known for these weird driving tour. tours we do. Emery and I are going to pile everything up in the van and drive around kind of the uh, the Great Lakes -ish area. We'll have more details once we nail down the last few visits. We're going to be going to a couple of stores and showing Hot Shots and Kaiju in person. We'll bring promo stuff. We'll be there if you want to say hi to us or have us oh. sign anything. So look for that. That's going to be right after Gen Con. Um, we're going to finish Gen Con, pile up in the van, and go. So. And, and that would be a good reason to subscribe to the newsletter yes. so that you know where you're going to be. Yes, follow us on Twitter. Twitter and Facebook and all that good stuff. Yeah, it'll, we'll keep you updated. And like I said, that's going to be pretty fun. We're on the road for like over a month, too. So we're wow. going to hit, I think it's over a dozen stores now. I don't have all the details. But yeah, we're going to be doing some pretty fun in-store appearances. So. That sounds fun. It is. We've done this a few times before, and it's always a blast. We get to meet cool fans, cool store owners. If there's a convention we can sneak in, we'll do it. But yeah, Right. It's, well, it's, I mean, it's, it's much more low-key than, than doing, say, something like this. Totally. Where you have uh, all this stuff scheduled, and you can really just sort of hang out with, with yeah, fans. And... Seriously. We, I mean, we'll just spend an evening playing. We we're definitely pushing, you know, Kaiju and if somebody's dying to play bears, we'll play bears with them. You know? Nice. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm sure you've got it in the van. Yeah, exactly. Gonna... We'll have a copy somewhere, yeah. Sweet. So, Justin, yeah. thank you very much. Hey, thank you guys very much. Us. Always a pleasure to be here. Hi, and Internet peoples. Thanks for your questions. We'll have more very soon. Awesome. <laughs>
Hello, everyone who's listening. Hey, we're glad you're here watching this dead air, but you know what, folks? There's not a lot we can do other than show you this. We could show you my face, but I'm sure you'd rather have the dead air. So here, we'll pan around the convention briefly. Woo! There you see Aries doing different things. There's Mark Street. There's Derek and Eric, or Eric and Derek. That's a new show we're doing. There's Wiz Kids, pretty busy doing Dice Masters and Hero Clicks tournaments. And we'll zoom in, okay? That's the wrong one. How do I make this tilt? Yeah, I got a. It's the, the, the twisty thing. This? No, that's not it. Uh, oh, it's this? Yeah, it rotates it. Yeah, okay. Camera fly by at the table. It's really zoomed up. Oh, man. <laughs> Here, we'll let them look at some different dead air. How's that? Dude, that looks really good. I, seriously, I walked up and he was like, hey, John, want a coffee? And I was like, all right.
he took my card. Yeah. He took my card, man. Sure. <laughs> 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 this guy was like, you got a Hopefully that's a print. No, it's a print. Yeah, okay, good. That actually does look kind of cool with the card. Maybe with these new cases. Oh, good point. That's a good one. Write that one down. Hi folks, we're back here at Origins with Jim from Ares Games, Hello. and what are we looking at today? This is This War of Mine. Ares Games uh, has a new partnership with a company called Galatka, which is a Polish publisher. They've been publishing games for a number of years, and we're very excited because we finally get to partner up with them, and we're going to distribute their products in North America and okay. parts of the world for the English language. This War of Mine is their, their latest edition, based on the hit video game that was kickstarted quite successfully. This is a tabletop version of that game. Okay, well, what do we have here? It looks like a lot of, a lot of cards. So for those who do not know, this war of mine, you play a citizen trapped in, in the middle of a civil war. You're not a soldier, you're just trying to survive and make your life a little bit better. You're trapped in a, a city that's surrounded by the government forces and you've been lumped in with the rebels even though you may or may not be one. So every day, you're fighting for survival and fighting to improve yourself. What you've done is, in, in the, the context of the game, is you've, you've found a building okay. that's relatively safe, and so every day, you're trying to explore your building, trying to go out to different locations and deal with all the things that, different ha that happen. The game is highly, highly replayable because there is so much variability in what you can find, the visitors that you see, etc. So in this case, what we've got set up here is we've got, you start with three characters, you can get more over the course of the game. During the day, you give them tasks. So for example, I can have this person here go down and try to look for, uh, see, 
what they find in that furniture. This character can go outside. This character can start clearing rubble. Well, you right. find things, you find equipment. So when they, for example, when they find this furniture, they search, well, they get things. Okay, okay so, so it's on the back of the card. It's on the back of the card. And so with the, the number of cards, what you find and how you get to it and the order you get equipment really matters. So you're sort of constrained in that way. As you acquire equipment or components, you actually have a set of, of fittings, which Americans would call improvements. Well, you can build improvements. Well, what does this take? It takes a filter, a mechanical. This takes wood and some components. Okay. When you build something, you actually get to replace it. So once I've, I've explored this area, I can go here and say, okay, then now build something I've else put a heater area. in that room. Well, once I build it then, now I can actually go here later on in future days and get a benefit for having that heater. The more I, more I build and the more that I have, more options I have, the better my life becomes because now I can, it's easier to gather food so I can focus on luxuries. I have a few luxuries so I'm happier. Okay. Happier citizens are a good thing. Well, so you're improving your quality of life You're improving your quality of life. At the same time though, you have to, sometimes you have to, um, you have to deal with visitors, you have to deal with different events and you have to deal with the night. So one of the things that happens is uh, you can scavenge at night. So you, when you scavenge, you can send characters to a location at night rather than resting. Okay. And so they can actually go through and, and gather more items. So it's okay. a great, great way to get more gear, get more equipment to build more things. But if you're out scavenging, well, what happens when the raiders come because ah. pillaging bands of raiders happen every night. Well, they, you've worked really hard all day to accumulate your items. Well, what happens when the raiders come and steal it? Well, now what do you do? So you have to find a good balance between having someone guard your, your items versus going out and getting new items. So if they so, went out and got something during the day, they're not going to be available to uh, defend? So or? they could, but what happens is every, every citizen uh, is tracked on a couple of different stats. So their health, uh, uh, the number of wounds they have, their food, their water, their misery. So if citizens don't get a good night's rest, they become miserable. If they don't oh, get that's, food, that's they get hungry. Cool. I like that. And then they start to lose action, so they become less and less effective. Citizens die. The very first game that I played, we had two citizens die the first day, which so, is highly unusual, but now your citizens die. So now, oh wait, these guys so died. one person. So now I have to go out and let other people come in. Well now once other people, maybe they bring better skills, maybe they bring not so good skills, maybe they're, they're good guys, maybe they, et cetera. Oh, so, so you could bring in citizens who may not be that helpful exactly, to you too. Exactly, okay. and then throughout the course of finding things, you'll, you'll find people, they'll say, for example, there, there's a card that says um, a citizen next door offers to trade food for information. So do you give up one of your hard-earned food to get information that may help you know if the raiders are coming and okay. what's going on? Or you may work with a traveling vendor that says, look, I'll take some of your stuff and I'll trade you something good, but okay, can I afford to, to pay the commission cost, if you will? So you're, again, making more decisions about what's going on. I like that. It seems like it's a lot of little moving pieces, but they all seem to work exactly. together. So this is a fully cooperative game. Fully cooperative. So you don't really have a character. Exactly. You're, everyone's kind of sharing in the pool of... Exactly. So if you're playing four people, you're still playing four characters. Very unique mechanic. There's actually a journal. So that what the journal does is it's like the active player token. So And it, it explains exactly how the game is played. So when you... When you set up the game, it says, there's a, a one-page setup that says, okay. here's how you set it up. And we've, we're only partially set up here, but one-page setup, a couple minutes. And then it walks you through every single step. You, there are no true rules to read. There okay. is only setup and now start playing. And as the game reveals itself, you say, it says, if you want to go to a location, here's what happens. Oh, okay, so I'm to the point of the game where I can search locations. Now I read about that. And, and if you have a question, there's a part of the rule book that says, here's how I have questions. So, so pretty so, quick to just get pretty, in, pretty, open the box and get going. Within half an hour, you're up and you're actually actively in the game once you've opened the box. And what's so. the what's the win and lose conditions of this? So, so how do you win every it? Every game lose it? has <laughs> random objectives. Okay. So over the course of time, first of all, you'll, com you'll take care of objectives. And then once you complete that objective over the course of time. Taking care of ourselves. So in this case, chapter one, You'll have to, day one, uh, you try to complete that. Now you go to chapter two. Ultimately, you get to the end, get to chapter three. Each, each one of these represents a day. So you have about a little over a week 
to complete all your objectives. If you're okay. successful, great. So it's a week in the life of just a human so being trapped there. So each turn a day, or exactly. Okay. Each turn, or each so round. Each rather. each day you have a. Citizens typically have three actions. Okay. Except if they're really hungry, or they're miserable, or they're wounded, or they're thirsty. Then they well, don't want to do th anything. Exactly. Then their their actions go down until finally you may get someone who goes. All they're doing is eating my food. I, they, they're no, they're not no help. To can me. you can you kick them out, uh, or you, you still have to drag you them have along? To, you're, you're try to, you can try to improve them by giving them food, and so their health recovers. So ah. as their health recovers, goes. You have bandages to heal. You have water to give them food, so to, to to help them their thirst. You can build things for them to make them more comfortable. So you try to bring them back and 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 uh, have them be an active part of your little community here. I like it. And the lose condition for this, or um, you can, if your um, your characters can get killed, and you can, or or can just give up, and and they can give up and just uh, honestly allow themselves to be killed, commit suicide. So there are some darker themes in regard to to that. So okay. if you're you're trapped in a civil war that you probably wanted no part of, and so how do you you get gotcha. through that? So so what's um, the ages on this game? Um, the, the, the game itself plays pretty simple, mm -hmm. so that would skew a little younger. Right. The themes are a little more adult, right, so that's what I was asking. teenagers and, and older would be a, be a more of appropriate okay. audience. Okay. And the and how many players? Uh, you can play up to six players. Six. But, again, but and the, the neat thing about it is, is you. So if we've got six players here and we're deciding what Anton should do, we can say. I want to do this, I want to do this, I think you should go over here. Well, the person who is the active player, which goes around the table in a very fast order, says, no, no, he's going down here. Okay. Okay, well, we've talked about it, but the active player is going to make that determination. Once he decides where, where Anton goes, then pass the book, which is, again, the active player. Active player says, okay, now where's she going to go? Well, I think okay. she should, no, no, no. I think she should go here and start clearing that. So you, there is someone. A lot to of to, table talk lot going of, on here. A lot of table talk. A lot of communication. And this is available now. Or it is available, available now. Available now. Okay, um, we don't quite have it. I mean, it's in the process of being shipped here. So okay. when I say now, days away. Okay. All okay. right. It is published and out. All right. All right. Well, that is this war of mine, and you guys have some other games to show. Yes. So we'll slide this one over, and you guys want to do this one next, or? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Bring this right over. I worked out. Slid right in. Perfect. Okay, so this is Divinity Derby. So this is Isabel, uh, Isabella, Isabella, right? Isabella, From Aries yeah. Games. And what are we looking at? Okay, so um, this is Divinity Derby. And this was our Kickstarter um, about a month or two ago. Um, and we're going to have it. Um, the fulfillment will be... Um, Hopefully at the beginning of August, and then um, we should have copies to sell at Gen Con, and then it'll be fully released um, by the start of September. Okay. So um, you are um, you are a god, and so you've come up to Mount Olympus to hang with Zeus and all of your other god friends. And um, after a couple rounds of drinks, you've decided that you should um, start start a betting game on the mythical creatures roaming around. Okay. At Olympus. So. Um, it's a party at Olympus. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got you know you've got like classics like um, the Phoenix, um, Griffin, all of that. Yeah, these and are really so, cool. I like this. Yeah, and so so you're gonna um, so first at the beginning you would pick um, who your god is. So um, for instance, um, so if I'm the sun god, these are. This is who I am, and then um, okay. all my cards look like that. And then we all have the same set of cards. These are our betting cards. We have like last place, um, disqualified, first place. And now there are three, we're gonna have three um, kind of laps in the race, okay. and then three rounds of betting per lap. So um, we're gonna make our first two bets right at the beginning. Um, these are going to be secret between us. So um, I'm going to say that I think that, um, and I'm going to, I'm going to choose. Um, I would choose with the token. So I'm going to say that um, I believe that um, the Griffin, for example, I'm going to say that I believe that's going to be last place next or next. Or to next last. to last place. So because okay. this is kind of a broader. Um, a broader guess than um, it goes. It's only worth four points, but some of the some of the big guesses, like if I guess who's going to be first place, 
if I am so sure that it's gonna be the dragon. There it is, that's my bet. Okay, so. I always bet on the dragon. Uh-huh, I, yeah, I agree. And so we're also, the players are also gonna be responsible for moving, um, for moving the mythical creatures themselves. And that's where this um, deck hand mechanic comes in. Okay, yeah, I was gonna ask about these. So um, we all get the same, um, every, every hand, every deck hand gets about um, eight cards. And so, but we sh share with our neighbors. So if I'm playing right here, I'm sharing with the person on my right and the person on the left. Okay. And that person on the right and on my left, they're sharing their with the right their and left right as and well. left. So you can see like what your cards would be here, and then um, we'd be looking at ours. So I can watch the person on my right what they're gonna pick. Okay. And so like if I see them continually um, going for um, if I see them going for the phoenix every time. I can start to gauge what I think that they're doing. Okay, so it's so you have information completely. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. really and, cool. Yeah, and they have information on you. So while you're trying to advance your bets, you um, you're trying you're trying to be sly as well. Right. So halfway through each round, you're gonna make your third bets based on um, how uh, you know how far the Pegasus is going and all that. Um, so you'd make your third bet. Again, it's secret. You'd look at what you have available um, from your hand of betting cards. How specific do these get? So you can, um, we've got like, we've got, you can make like three place guesses at a time, uh -huh. or you can just go, um, you know, first place disqualified. So what, and and that's when, that's when it comes. So when it comes down, when uh, the first lap is over, we're going to see how they did and they get, you know, placed, you know, Dragon's number one, um, this guy, you know, okay, whatever. So whatever the order is. All that matters is the dragon was number one. Right, of course. <laughs> and so um, so then we're going to take a look at um, the dirty trick pile. So um, so you might notice, and we'll show, show you right here. Um, so you might notice on some of these, you've got the option of third and first. So okay. that's because you get to advance a character. You get to do two moves every time it's your turn. So um, if I wanted to do the Lama Soul, if I was going to make it my first choice, they get to move um, three because they're playing a dirty trick. Okay. Um, if I just want them to, um, wait, hold on. Actually, I forgot something. Let me show you a different card. What do I got here? What do I got here? Okay. Um, so on some of these cards, there should be um, a little second number option. Uh -huh. And so if they're if you're moving them, if the Lama Soul is your first one and you choose that second number option, which is not on the not card. Not on the cards, okay. But um, we'll I left pretend. them in the box. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that means you're playing a dirty trick. So you can you get to move the three plus you know the two. So they can move five ahead. Okay. However, they get put in um, the dirty trick pile, and the dirty trick pile um, at the end of the game, all of the characters who played that dirty trick. Get um, get put in um, with these Zeus cards. So um, okay, so we mix it all together. Well, oh, I feel like uh, you're gonna get judged by Zeus. Yes. <laughs> so um, so every time you played your dirty trick, um, it only is gonna count against you if you're the first place one. Okay. So um, so so you get mixed in with these Zeus cards. Okay, dragons um, dragons number one. So we're looking at all of dragons dirty tricks. Um, so we draw, shuffle it all together. Oh, okay. So if you would have had your your character drawn, that means you would have been moved to last place, oh. um, or uh, I mean disqualified. So you don't get any of your points. If you would have drawn the Zeus card, you would have been he looked favorably on you. He says you're allowed to have that one. All right. Um, and how many how many laps? There's going to be three laps. Okay. Um, and it's up to six players. So, six players. So, so it can be um, you know two to I, six. Two to, six, two to six. Yeah. Okay. So um, I. Like I've played games where we just did one lap with a couple players, so it goes really fast, like right. 30 minutes, or we can, you know, make it the full hour and a half if we want. Okay, so you can scale it and do yeah. less laps. Uh -huh. uh, how does that work in a two-player game with the information? Do you? Oh, I guess it doesn't. I guess it's four to six. Yeah, that was silly. Four to six. <laughs> four to six. I'm I was, sorry. <laughs> I was just curious. I'm like, yeah, no, you're right. Four <laughs> to six. And you said this will be available. It um, should be available um, by the end of August. Hopefully, for hopefully in time for Gen Con, it should be Gen end Con. of August. It's the plan. Well, it seems Kickstarter great. comes out first, of course. Everybody's going to get fulfilled. Okay. Okay. And this already did Kickstarter. Yes. Right? Uh -huh. okay. We're all done. With okay. That. Okay. Yeah, this looks really cool. I really like these miniatures. 
I do too. Yeah. yeah, I like I like that they all get the full personality of every character and every uh, every god. All right, we'll slide this one, and this is the one I'm excited for. <laughs> I have to be honest. Don't don't tell my boss, but I I'm more excited for Divinity Derby. That was that was my big release of the summer. Yeah. But Hunt for the Ring, I know a lot of people are looking forward to. No, that that looks <laughs> really cool too. Um. So in Hunt for the Ring, um, okay, let's do you see it? Let's get her set Sorry. up. Sorry. Get her set up real quick. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, so, so we're here with Isabel from Aries, and we're looking at... Hunt for the Ring. Okay, so um, in Hunt for the Ring, we're going to play out the first part of the Quest for the Ring, kind of what we didn't cover in our other games from the, our War of the Ring series. Right. Um, so we're trying to find that ring. So one player is going to be playing Frodo, and the rest of the people playing the game are going to be working together to stop Frodo. So their, their movements are marked here. So it's a one versus all? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then um, Frodo, of course, is back here. He's so, so short. Uh huh. Just, and then um, Gandalf is back here. He doesn't come into play right away. So um, everybody's working together to um, stop Frodo. Um, Frodo is moving publicly. Um, but of course, we've got secret movements back here. And so that's actually what. Um, We'll have like markers to place it. This isn't the full, the full okay. version. So, so the, this will be the Frodo player. will have this. Correct. Yeah, because okay. he's hiding. Um, and so, um, so you're just tracking your movements. And then um, when you get to Bree, is when the first stage um, is over. Um, and then on the back, this board will flip, and that's when you um, complete the second half. Okay. And that's when Gandalf um, comes into play. Um, the last. Um, I'll be honest, the last I heard um, well, when the rules so were So the back written, of the board has a... Uh-huh. It should show that. <laughs> okay. I think we may have had it flipped. I think this might have been the second ah, part. Ah, that probably makes more part. sense. Yeah. Um, but so, so during that second part is when um, Gandalf comes to play. And last I heard when I, um, when I, when I played that first, first demo um, with the author, um, Gandalf was going to be introduced with a new player and kind of the idea and what makes it cool is that you can play one half of Hunt for the Ring one night um, with a couple friends and then mm -hmm. the next night is when you can start making the, um, the ones hunting for Frodo. You can make them um, a kind of a cooperative group. You can add a new player in Gandalf, you know, the second night you're playing oh, with friends or something cool. like that. And it's still got the same um, like heavy reliance on theme um, that the other um, War of the Ring games um, from our line have, um, but this is more of a, this is a shorter gameplay, right. and it's got what that the, hidden movement. So, elements. what is the, the the time on this? I believe, I believe it's it's going to be um, kind of the length of more like a Euro game would be like an hour and a half. Okay. Um, and these dice, these are these are nice. What are these for? I have to be honest. I haven't played <laughs> with the dice yet. I I know they determine movement. to see where you can search um, for your ring. Okay. Um, so you'll so you have you have your movements and then um, you roll them and see how how the search went at that movement at that location whether it has marked here. And when can we expect to see this? That um, this will be September. 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 Yeah. And the player count on this was it well it's two to five I believe. Two to yeah. five? Two to five. Oh, these miniatures are really cool. I like these. Yeah, and well, so. and I hope that when we um, our next show, they have they have like fully painted ones. So I'd okay. really like to show those off. So, so will it come in cool. a, in a painted version and an unpainted version? Or I, uh, there's no plan on it, but no I think plan. I think we can I, th I think we can hope for that. <laughs> so do you think this is something that you could do do the one night and yeah. then do the second night and then on the next night we all play War of the Ring? If you want a really long game <laughs> night, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I think, yeah, that do it. <laughs> All right, well, I thank you for, for showing us these. All right, and, thank you. Uh, we'll see you guys soon. This is really cool.
Yeah, they're supposed to be. Yes, sir. Oh, am I live already? All right. Here's your microphone. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for your questions during the chat. I'm here with Isabella from Aries Games, and uh, we're going to answer some of these questions, hopefully. Okay. Uh, let's, let's work backwards. Uh, Hunt for the Ring is sort of the thing that got everybody super excited. Oh, good, good. Um, Playtime, you said, was around 90 minutes or so. Is that per session, or is that for a full game? I, I believe that's per session. So the, the yeah. first half of the board, around 90 minutes, and then flip it, and that's another 90 mm -hmm. minutes. Yeah. Okay. Um, are those the final sculpts for the miniatures? Yes, those okay. are the final scopes. Um, that was definitely a prototype of the game, but that's the final, final artwork and okay. uh, final sculpts. Um, how is how is movement determined? So if I'm playing Frodo, do I have cards that tell me where I can go, or do I get to decide where I go? Yeah, so you do have cards. Um, we didn't get them out because they're they're like just the little paper okay. uh, paper rules. It, that's not the final version, but yeah, you'll have. You'll have cards that determine your movements. Um, like I said, the the ones hunting will their movements are secret and they're more mechanical, okay. so um, more routine. And then um, the dice come in once you get to the location, but your movements are, are by a card. And and in the cards, they'll be you know like you know move this path or they'll be move over here. You'll okay. You'll have different different things come up. All right, so it's sort of a combination of wherever you want and yeah. card based movement. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Folks asking when they'll be able to get their hands on it. Uh, are you planning to have it available at any of the big cons later in the year, Essen, um, Gen Con? Yes to Essen. Yes to Essen. Um, I don't think there'll be a problem with Essen. Um, the original plan was, of course, Gen Con to have it be able to release by then. Um, last I last I kind of spoke to the production team, mm -hmm. it was already uh, looking like it was behind schedule. So the hope is Gen Con, but it'll definitely be ready by Essen. Okay. Uh, Anniversary editions of, of the uh, uh -huh. the the whole War of the Ring series. Any plans for more anniversary editions? A, a reprint of the War of the Ring? There, there's no plans right now, but um, it's something that that we're definitely talking about, okay. and it's um, we literally just finished that last anniversary, so I feel like like we're like like gathering our bearings and like taking a breather. But um, we've definitely been talking about it the whole time. We're trying to finish that last one, so I, I think it's very likely. Okay. Uh, let's move on. To, it's asking about Wings of Glory. Mm -hmm. um, any plans for bringing some out of print planes back into print? Um, and, and also talking about the campaign rules for Wings of Glory. Do you, can you share anything about those? Um, the next um, series of planes, um, January um, of next next year, so first okay. quarter next year, will be um, the next series of World War II. And then I. I know there there is at least one reprint, and I have to say I don't remember okay. which one it is. But it's, there's one reprint from the original series, and then um, I don't think uh, the schedule for for World War One has been has been decided okay. on. Okay, I think it was specifically World War One out okay. of print oh. planes. Any then, plans then to bring I don't some of those back? Answer. I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> All right, no, that's fine. Um, anything that you can share coming up for the War of the Ring franchise? Are you planning anything beyond? Hunt for the Ring? Um, 
the answer is no right now like um we're we're always working with like trying to find um a di- like small kind of like promo editions mm-hmm. and so um we actually we printed more tree beards so um we're still giving those out that's kind of what we're on right now and we're looking for um for the next kind of exclusive that we're going to have available kind of for the past for the past games to give away with hunt for the ring so that's that's a secret right now okay basically but but it is um, that the only thing that we really have in the works is kind of exclusive items. All right. Not yet a new game. Uh, questions coming up about tripods and triplanes. Do you know it's anything still, about it? It's still happening. Okay. It's still in the production schedule, and it just ev- every time we kind of have our meeting to plan, it gets pushed back even more. Okay. But it's still a plan. Um, last I heard, we were kind of looking at third quarter of this coming year. Um, kind of getting it manufactured. Okay. Um, like I said, we pushed it back so many times. But Folks it, eager but to, we really, they want to see the sculpts. I want to see it, see see it the, so bad, okay. too. I think it's going to be awesome, yeah. All right. So I'm, I'm excited for it to, to become real. Uh, Divinity Derby, what's the uh-huh. MSRP on that one? That's going to be $50. $50 uh-huh. uh, with the minis, you know, that's going to be with a the, okay. Yeah, everything we just showed that, um, I believe, is I believe is the final, okay. final production. All right. Well, if anybody's looking for more information on your stuff, where do they go? Um, we find information on our website, yeah. which is um, ariesgames.eu. Um, and then our Facebook, um, specifically the just backslash Aries Games. Okay. Um, that's um, updated constantly. We do a lot of news articles and um, um, kind of inter- like interviews and exclusive with like our authors and people um, doing research for us on the like specific planes released, mm-hmm. um, the, the history of each plane, and we've got all of that kind of like backlogged on our website. Okay. If there's a certain um, there's a certain plane that you get excited about, um, for instance, you would be able to find that by searching its name on our websites. Um, but in terms of news, um, I, I really rely on the Facebook when I uh, okay. when we want when I want to share what's what's coming up and what's cool. Awesome. Head to the Facebook. Yes. Isabella, thank you very much. Thank you. And thank yeah. you all for your <laughs> questions. We'll have more for you very soon.
Look busy, guys. No, I'm just kidding. I know. That's like my job. Hey, look, here's the boss. I'm very busy. Yeah. <laughs> See, I've thought about putting the camera on a live playthrough while they're just playing something, too. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like he's talking about it. Oh, cool. Alright, folks. Uh, we have a uh, few people canceled their showings, so we are going to just talk here for a bit. So we'll sure. take some live Q&A. Yeah, why not? Uh, on the feed. And um, once this is over, we're pretty good for the rest of the day. I have confirmed with everybody. Oh, good. And we it's, will. It's hard though, because like this is the the exhibit hall has been open for an hour and ten minutes, and I think a lot of these companies are just in the crush of people and selling, and and they I, I'm sure that they've totally well, forgotten also, about. So, this has never happened to me before, but we scheduled these meetings with everybody, and everyone put them in Google Calendar. Oh man! And that then they moved to different time zone, and it changed. And I've never. Is this something new? I've never had it happen before. This is functionality that people aren't. I, I you know the first time it's happened to me. I was surprised by it. So, like, if, say, if you're on the West Coast and you make an appointment with us to, you're on camera at 10 a.m., and then you come to the East Coast to talk with us, and now, now your schedule has automatically been updated, and they think they're talking with us three hours later I just later think that that's are. weird. Yeah, I guess. I just feel like it's weird that that's an automatic thing. Yes. Because to me, if I make an appointment to meet with someone at 2, I'm meeting with them at 2, I'm not saying let's meet at two. By the way, I know you're in India, and that's actually <laughs> ten at night. Yeah, it's it's when it's only an hour or two change that it's kind of weird. Um, people ask you what you had for dinner last night. They want you to talk about food, Tom. I had some pretzel sticks and uh, a piece of pizza. I ate pretty light, actually. Why well, sign nothing personal at Gen Con? Yes. <laughs> we did. We went to the North Market. What last was for night. breakfast? A Reuben. Actually, that's not a bad idea. I actually succumb to the culture of America and had breakfast food. I had an omelet <laughs> with everything. Yes. Everyone wants to know about food. What did we play last night? You taught me a game last night. We played uh, El Dorado. Dorado. You yeah. played it again then, actually. I played it a second time. I, um, I enjoyed it. This did is a, It's a deck builder uh, race game yeah. from Reiner Knizia. Um, and you, you got a big old board with different terrain types and you have to play cards to move you on different spaces uh, and then you can also spend them as gold to acquire better more efficient cards uh, into your deck which is it's neat I liked it I'm intrigued I haven't won yet but I liked it yeah uh, did, did you play one of the maps that was printed or did I you... did it so yeah we did a pre-printed map one of they have an easy medium and hard level map uh, array on the back we played one of the medium maps which is nice. It, the, the tiles have a nice flow. They've, they've been you know, planned so that it, it flows from one to the other. But you can do random, which is what we played with you. Yeah, but I mean, I did semi-random. I still right. made it so that the terrain got harder as you went through. There's a lot of options in that box, though. I mean, there's stuff we didn't even look at. There's extra tiles and like bonus yeah, areas. Uh, yeah, those tiles, I, I'm going to try them. They add a little bit of randomness, I think, but some intriguing things. Someone said time zones is not an excuse. It is an excuse, though. If you if you make a lot of meetings and you put them in your thing and then you get there, you're not going to remember when all your meetings are. So you look at it and you're like, oh, yeah, it's at, it's at 5. It makes sense. Yeah. I, I, it's right. a very legitimate thing. When it's, it's only an hour or two off where it should be, then it, it makes sense in your head that this is, yeah. Question break. Have you undergone any formal vocal training or is it all natural? Well, okay, this is how I talk. This is... People have made fun of me in college for this. I, you know, this is this is. The well, way wait I talk. a minute, though. I mean, you pronounce very clearly. Was that 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 wasn't practiced? I I've never practiced enunciation specifically, but I think over the years of doing this as my job, I I am forced to be specific and clear. Because if I mumble my way through something, nobody's going to understand what I'm doing. I'm going to have to do it over again anyway. If I'm trying to convey information to someone, I need to speak clearly. So yes, there's there's training. I've taken classes. I've taken audiobook training and voiceover techniques, mic techniques, that sort of thing. But as far as um, you know, just vocal, my voice is my voice. It's how to use it that needs the training. There's two questions here that go together. The first was, what questions are you sick of hearing? And the second question is, what's hot? <laughs> so. 
the, the hall's been open for an hour and 15 minutes. But it's very hard for us to gather that information. It's not even that though. I tell, I tell people we are so much on the forefront of gaming sometimes where I'm playing games and I see the new ones. Like we just played Dorado, right? El Dorado, the road yeah. to El Dorado. It's not out yet. Right. I mean, I got a German copy of it. So that might come out at Gen Con and someone come in, Eric, what's hot? And that might be a hot game, but yeah. he's played it here. So yeah. he's not thinking, oh, it's hot. But if you want to know what games, so whatever people come and ask us at conventions, it's like, eh. But the two games I saw people running for were the Deluxe Yokohama. Okay. Because yep. they had like 40 copies or something. And it's and shiny. I saw people running for Century. Because I think they only had 100 copies of that too. Okay. They only uh, had 100 copies of Century? Yeah, what, are you sad? <sighs> I'm never going to play this game. It's never going to happen. Well, the designer is coming by the booth soon. <laughs> I didn't tell him to bring a game, though. I was I was actually planning after we finished this session to run in and try and get a copy, but maybe 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 they still probably they, they might. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know that they ran out. Um, I just saw, I saw people in queuing for that. People want to know what's on your hat. You have oh, a card oh. on your hat. It's just a uh, a plank. Hey Z, did you see these cards? We're on camera, by the way. <laughs> huh? I told the guy I would what? show huh? you these. There's a guy in the back make custom cards. Okay, these are cool. I don't want to lie to him and not tell you about it. They're suggesting that you put like a, a press thing on it. You had a, the word press. Press. <laughs> these look like Fontaines, maybe? I don't know what that means, but it's on a, it's right. on a deck for 10. He right. said the company that makes it is this company that makes David Blaine's card. It was being very impressive. Like, do you know David Blaine? Ooh. And I was like, David Blaine's, David Blaine's cards. cards. By, uh, Dan and Dave, I think. Wow, you're so smart. He collects these. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, how he knows. Nice. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll I thought swing, you had them because I saw you. Yeah, you collect cards, Z? Yeah. We had somebody from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory stop by and hand us some gifts, including a deck of cards from NASA. Cool. Yeah, so uh, we'll, we'll show you those later. Okay. Wait, who are they for? They're for us to share. We have to fight <laughs> over who gets what. There's some hats. The end... There's several hats for you. Oh yeah, there's a beanie, there's a hat that says JPL on it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. At the nice. end of every we convention, like we put all our gifts in a pile, <laughs> and then it's a there's draft. a fight. <laughs> no, it's actually we draft. We did that at Essen one time. At Essen we, we did it with snacks and candy. And yeah. we drafted. Nowadays, yep. we don't do that as much. We basically say, Eric, what do you want? And then the rest goes in a suitcase. <laughs> they pity me. It's fine. No, 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 because we all we because have the they studio can draft now. it later. Yeah. Oh, you can, you can. We just put in the studio and, and then see who takes it. it. Yeah. Our studio is really unhealthy currently. <laughs> Did you do any voicing in the Where Words app? Is there voicing? Uh, yes, there is voicing. Um, I am not the voice. They wanted a natural British voice for that one. So, although I tried, I'm like. Can you let me audition? And so I, I tried it out. But I think they didn't want it to sound like me doing a British accent. They wanted a, a separate voice for where words. I am on Alien, though. So if you get the Alien, One Night Ultimate Alien, I'm on there. I'm going to play it without the app. No. You, ha you have to play it with the app. Oh, alien this requires is, this it. This is the required one? Yeah, because uh, there's random elements. So you, you have to uh, play with the app. You have to listen to me. Do you play these games? Not nearly as often as... I mean, is that People no? But I mean, think, do you yeah. play them? Is it like weird then for the like? If do you play it with your wife and then it's kind of weird because she thinks you're talking? It, it, when I do play it, it's a little odd. Especially odd is when my son says, "I don't want to use the app. I want to narrate it," and he narrates it like me on the app. Fortunately, That's for weird. at least the werewolf, one eye ultimate werewolf, you can switch to a different voice. So I always do. You can pick you male or female. Alien, you can. Oh, you can't for alien. Okay. I'm the only alien narrator ah, so far. The, the garbage. Garbage. Yep. All right. So anyway, let's, uh, we're skipping lots of questions. Um, People asking when you're going to play All My Goods. Will that happen here? It's the same person. We don't oh, okay. reward people asking the same question over and over again. All right. Then. I'll play it when I want to play it. No, of course I mean, they only had 100 copies of Century. Any other number wouldn't make sense. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's good. That's true. That's true. <laughs> um... We haven't really had a favorite game that's, uh, again, it's too early for that. I need to play Mr. Maze tonight. That's got to happen. Do you mean Magic Maze? Magic Maze. We I played see, it last night. I, I went to you sleep went to last bed. night. You went to bed. It was like 10 o'clock. I had been up since 2.45. I needed to go to sleep. It was, it was the right call. It was the right, the right call. call. 
because I'm awake today. I am too. I went to bed after and got up before. Who makes the clear dice tower used during the Champions of Midgard playthrough? <laughs> we keep getting asked that. Uh, it's not out yet. It's still kind of a prototype type thing. We'll, we'll, oh. We're hoping to have them for our Dice Tower Kickstarter, but we're still working with it. Hey, we have a, one of our uh, things has shown up, so we're gonna we're gonna switch it up soon. But we got a few minutes while they're setting it up. Um, let's see here. What's why? Would we watch a Willow sequel? Sure. I haven't seen Willow. I know. It's. I, Here's the problem, though. I don't know that you can go back and watch Willow now because the acting is good, but the special effects yeah. are really bad. I don't feel like it's something that I've, I, I'm suffering because I missed it. Yeah, but you wouldn't, you don't, un, you wouldn't understand half of Sam's quotes. <laughs> you need to watch these movies just so when Sam makes these quotes, you're like, ah, oh, ha, 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 ha. well referenced, sir. Yeah, if he's doing Transformers the movie quotes, I'm all set. But Willow. You like, are you talking about transforming a cartoon movie? I'm talking about Orson the original Wells. 19, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I don't think there is any quotes from the, the live action movies. No, other, other than the quotes <laughs> from Transformers the movie, the original. Like, they've put a couple of lines from the original animated film in the reboot film, and everyone cheered when one shall stand, one shall fall. Yes. Oh, speaking of which, someone asked here about Caverna Cave vs. Cave. That's another one that people were running for. Yes, there was but, a line. We're, we're right next to the, uh, the the Mayfair booth, and there was a line before they started selling, and I'm, I'm sure they're gone by now. Yeah, well, they only had like 40 copies. Yeah. It was really low. When should we tune in for more live coverage? Isn't, aren't we live now? <laughs> this isn't recorded. This is, we're I know like, what it's you mean. You want to know when the next publisher, they're, they're setting, they're up, setting now. up right now. So it's, it will be fine. a few minutes, and then we'll switch over. Um, Who's been our favorite interviewee so far? There have been a couple that we've said, oh, talking with the person has been more interesting than the game. <laughs> but we won't say which one. Oh my goodness. We never think that. We won't say which one. That was only one of them. I like this. Someone said I should make an office version of Nothing Personal called Nothing Personnel. Personnel. Yes, I think that was a pun we did at the end of the show once. Was it? Yeah. There's no way you can remember all the puns. I have a list. I've got a doc. And, and at this point, I actually search. Like when someone suggests one, I have to search for those keywords to make sure I haven't done one similar. For some reason, people think that Glue Maven is the funniest thing ever. And we did it 20 episodes back, but people keep suggesting it. Hey, adhesive aficionados provided by Glue Maven. <laughs> I don't how know. Much, how many boards it. could a Mongols hoard if the Mongol hordes got bored? What's your uh, go-to... Uh, yes, I can sing Dare to be Stupid, yes. What's your go-to tongue twister when you're trying to loosen up? The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue. And then I move on to right, white wire, right, white wire, right, white wire, and unique New York, unique New York, unique New York. I do. He ran to the Andes from the Indies in his undies. That's more that interesting. Works. Yeah. The Bubble Man. <laughs> the, people like the, that. The people are still talking about the Bubble Man. I missed the Bubble Man. That must have been yesterday morning. So Wednesday, the morning feed. Check that one out. That's got the Bubble Man on it. Will WizKids be on later? Yes, they're coming on today, actually. They'll be our... No, wait. WizKids. <laughs> yes. Did, did, yes. <laughs> wait, I see what you did. <laughs> you, you wrote Z-Man because you're talking to Zev Slasinger, who, who founded Z-Man, but is now working for WizKids. Z-Man will not be on our live feed, so it's definitely WizKids. So yes, WizKids will be the last people this we start to. This is confusing, people. It is, like, because is there's so much cross-pollination in the industry. You'll talk to the some, same person in three different conventions. They're working for three different companies. It's oh, pretty, no kidding. I'll meet someone and be like, so how's life at whatever company? Yeah. They're like, oh, I'm not I there I haven't anymore. worked for them for three years. And we're yeah. like, oh, <laughs> that was awkward. Uh, yes. Has anybody, have you played Baron Park yet? No, no, it's at my house. I just haven't played it um, because we came here. And then we were at UK Games Expo. Um, I'm hoping to play it and review it before Dice Tower Con, but no promises. This next month, this I next know. two weeks. We get weeks. back from this, it's, and then it's a two-week break, and then we're at Dice Tower Con, right? Yeah, but this next week, I'm doing VBS. So I'll be like, <laughs> review, review, review. Singing some songs with the VBS kids. Review, review, review. Somewhere. Sleep. 
Review, review, <laughs> review. All right. Uh, Somebody yeah. asked me what my favorite cat game is. I did a top ten list on that. Um, red leather, yellow leather. That's my that's my vocal warm up. You do that one. Red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. Yeah, I do. I All have right. like a sequence. All right, we're we're, we're done here. We're we're uh, oh. moving over to Sam Healy at the main uh, studio. See y'all. Bye. Play waste, play waste. Play waste games. Hey everybody, welcome back to our continuing coverage of. All right, we should probably. The Origins Summer Preview. You're watching the Dice Tower. I'm Sam Healy. This is John from Lay Waste Games. Hello. And uh, he's going to show us the gold edition of Dragoon. So take it away, John. What's this all about? Uh, so you play as a dragon on an island, and some stupid, stupid humans are invading your <laughs> island. We all know how okay. stupid humans are. Yeah, we are humans now. are kind of dumb, yeah. However, they have gold. And your oh. goal is to get the 50 gold for the other dragons by destroying the stupid humans or making them worship you and pay you tribute gold. It's a great decision <laughs> okay. to have. Yes, uh, game that is Game takes cool. place in three basic phases. Population, when the humans come to the board in the form of tiles, by using a coordinate system, mm -hmm. you roll two metal D6s, and you basically toss down a tile at that coordinate. Okay. Action phase, every dragon takes their turn. And then the tribute phase, you find out if the humans pay you tribute. All right. Uh, the game comes with an amazing fabric board, fabric bag for traveling, which is also the scorekeeper. Yeah. Little fabric bags. And of course, 52 metal pieces finished <laughs> in real gold, silver, copper, and black nickel. Wow. Really heavy, really awesome. This is the gold edition. We have a basic version, which is plastic. Everything else is the same except for the metal. Switches the plastic. Okay. Uh, we just had a Kickstarter for the you expansion. Yeah, the same, like same jazz. colors and all that kind of stuff, or what uh, colors different are the colors, plastic? Slightly different colors. We have uh, ketchup, which is the red, <laughs> uh, squash, which is the orange, okay. bone, which is the off-white, and sea monster, which is the blue. Okay. That's the Sounds cool. Version. Yeah. All right, so run us through, I guess, maybe just a turn. Yeah, sure thing. Show, sh show us how it works. Uh, so every dragon starts off the game with three cards. And the game starts off with population. So you, again, take the amount of players. Let's say we have four players. We're uh -huh. going to take five tiles. Okay. And you roll the 2d6. So three so and three. three. Three, Boom, boom. Toss a tile down there. Got it. Uh, go ahead and roll those. Six, six five. Six, five. Yeah. Ooh, what is that guy? That is a one. Okay, a one and three, three then. Three, one. So we got three, one. All right. I'm roll it two more times. Three, five. Three, five. Over boom. there. And one more. And this is a four, four. Four, four. Boom. There you go. So that happens every single round. So humans are constantly coming to the board. And you have, it's your humans. choice to destroy them or uh, make them worship you. They're terrible. Right. So now every dragon takes their turn. So you start off with three cards, and you have three actions, which are outlined on the reference cards for each player. Okay. During your turn, you can move up, down, left, and right. You can claim. You can destroy. Cards are free to play, and there is no hand limit. You're a dragon, so why not be powerful? Yeah. Uh, so let's say I was the silver dragon. A typical move would be move up one, move right one, and then take a claiming totem, toss it on there. <laughs> now that, those humans have the potential of paying me during the tribute phase, which is the phase after the action phase. I do have the option, though, of just saying, you know what? I don't want to have them worship me. I'm just going to wipe them off the board, destroy them, and get immediate gold. Cool. So it's that risk versus reward. Do you want to try to hold on to the humans for the entirety of the game or a portion of the game, try to siphon gold away from them? Or do you just want to say, screw it, I'm just going <laughs> to immediately take gold and destroy them. Now, if these get rolled again, they do get flipped to cities, which means there's more humans, more gold, more Harder to destroy. No, okay. Exactly. Oh, okay. Exactly. Uh, still, easy to destroy yeah. because they're humans. Okay. Squishies. Stupid. Exactly. Okay. It's a very good term. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so after the action phase, let's say these dragons have some uh, some items claimed, you then roll a d6. There are cards to enhance your roll, but let's say the, the black nickel dragon here says, all right, I'm going to roll for these humans. Uh, let's see if they pay me gold. Boom. I got three. a three. That's standard payout. So that means the villages pay you three, or the villages pay you one, and the cities pay you three. Okay. If you rolled a two, nothing would happen. A one, you would choose one to lose. Or a six, you get critical tribute. And the villages pay you four, the cities pay you, villages that's pay you shown, one, two, cities pay you four. That's shown on the back side of the card. Correct. So that's yep. cool. Yep. Exactly. Very good. Uh, and we just released an expansion, uh, which gives you two asymmetrical uh, new play styles. Okay. A rogue, which doesn't have a deck of cards, uses equipment to uh, you know, use different moves and stuff like that. They equip and unequip throughout the game. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and they also have tunnels that help you move around on the board. Oh, that's cool. And the Barbarian, a little bit similar to a dragon, but they have a deck of cards that will uh, you, uh, be able to be used depending on their level. So they level from one to five throughout the game, mm -hmm. and you can use certain cards if you are said level. Okay. That's um, cool. And we just had the expansion for that. Uh, it got funded, and uh, we're shipping in November. In November? Yep. Okay, so Correct. this is available right now? Uh, you can get this right now at select conventions. We didn't have enough to bring here okay. because we're working on making metal. metal. Making metal takes a long time. Yeah, it does. Go, go figure. Yeah. Uh, but we can get, we'll have these available at other conventions this year and then also on playdragon.com. You can get the metal or the plastic version of the expansion and the base game. Okay, so what's the MR, MSRP of the gold edition and then the yep. regular edition? Gold edition MSRP is 90. Okay. Plastic version, which has everything the same except for the metal, which is plastic, Correct. Uh, is 50. Okay. And then the expansion is uh, 40 and 30 respectively. Everything fit in this bag? Everything fits in this bag. Expansion can fit so in this bag So you don't have too. to keep the box if you don't want to. No, but you can throw it away. Yeah. But cool. it has a nice, foam insert no yeah yeah it has a really nice foam insert that's yeah. correct and really these solid. metal pieces uh, it, the the camera really doesn't do them justice they are very you know sturdy, weighty sturdy durable yeah you're not i mean you could really hurt somebody if you threw it at them we do not encourage that of course not um, i'm just saying it's a possibility <laughs> <laughs> it is a possibility we've had siblings come up and say can i throw this at my brother if i lose and i'm like eh, you can please it's, don't it's physically possible but you don't want to very cool. All yeah. right. So that is Dragoon from Layways Games. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. We appreciate thank you it, very John. Much. And uh, we're going to be sending you over to Z for Q&A. So we'll see you over there. Hello, hello. How, How you doing, John? Was it? Yes. Shit to meet you, John. I'm Z. I'm gonna give you that. Cool. And uh, I have just a. Out, uh, I don't think so. Okay. I think we got a good look at them up there. Cool. It's a, quite a small box, actually. Um, everything is in there nicely Correct. compact. That's good. Uh, people just had a couple of questions for sure. you. The interwebs. So let's let's get to them. So play. You 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 mentioned this one already, actually. MSRP for each version. Yep. I, uh, that was uh, 90 for the metal, 50 for the plastic. 
Correct. And then the expansion is 40 for the metal, 30 for the plastic. Done. People were uh, wondering about uh, player interaction, combat, anything like that. Is there yes. the ability to steal Definitely. from each other, take gold, all that Correct. stuff? Correct. You can hop into another dragon's cave and steal from them. Okay. And you can fight other dragons. Okay. So if you guys, uh, if two dragons are in the same spot at the same time, you have dragon combat, D6 versus D6, and there are cards to enhance your rolls. Okay. Uh, loser loses three gold to the winner, and the loser goes back to their cave. Got it. And you can steal from other dragons' caves by hopping into their cave and rolling D6. However, there are cards to prevent you from doing that but you must leave the cave uh, before the end of your turn where the other dragon comes home and steals gold from you. Yeah, okay, got it. Yep. So there is there is a fair amount of combat in the game. Like once someone starts getting ahead, you'll see other players start going after them strategically and saying, let's take them down. There are cards that help you steal remotely from mm. them. And there's an NPC that will kind of like acts like free parking. It's the thief. And you can get that thief's treasure somewhere on the board. Got it, yep. got it, cool, done. Uh, someone was wondering about a Gen Con demo or release. Will it be a Gen Con? Yes, definitely a Gen Con, and we will be selling copies of Gen Con as well. You'll have it for yep. release we'll at have, Gen Con. Uh, the Gold Edition at Gen Con, mm -hmm. and the Plastic version and the Expansion will all be for pre-order on PlayDragon.com. So you're going to have this one, the other ones, a little later. Yep, because uh, we're producing those. What are you calling the other one? Uh, the other one's the Rogue and Barbarian Expansion. Okay, and the Adds regular Plastic pieces. version is just Dragoon? Does yeah. it say Gold Edition? So this one's Dragoon Gold Edition, Plastic Version's Dragoon, and then the expansion is the Rogue and Barbarian expansion, and then the Rogue and Barbarian expansion is Gold Edition. Sure. Sounds yeah. good enough. Yep. Um, let's see, anything else? Anything else? Uh, da, 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 da. I did want to ask you myself about how long is the gameplay for it? Yeah, so if you have uh, experienced players, 40 to 60 minutes, depending on how many players you're playing with, you can add maybe like 20 minutes of learning onto that if you've never okay. played before. And then the expansion, if you add uh, a fifth or sixth player, it is typically another like 15 minutes per player. Okay. Um, and you can play with any combination on the expansion. So you can play with just a rogue and a barbarian. You can play with two dragons and a rogue, two dragons and a barbarian. So any combination from two through six. Okay. Cool. Yep. And the uh, board in this one is that cloth board. Yep. Is that also in the plastic version? Correct. Cloth board. The only for, thing that changes is the metal pieces. You guys are going for the cloth board for all the yep. all the additions. Yeah, this. you get the foam insert. You get everything is the exact same. You don't have the foil on the outside of the box uh, for the plastic version. Okay. And just the gold pieces or the metal pieces are plastic. Sounds good. Yeah. Cool. Good okay. talking to you, man. Thank you. Appreciate all the answers. Yeah, no problem. And we're gonna we're gonna send you back. We're gonna finish this up. Cool. Cool, thanks very much.
How you doing everybody? Welcome to the Origins 2017 Summer Preview. And I am here with Mark Walker from Flying Pig Games. Now let me just tell you right now, I am completely prejudiced. These are some of my favorite games that I have played in the last year. And I'm going to let you show everybody how great this stuff is. Thanks, Rob. I appreciate oh. it. Hey, I'm Mark. Like he was saying, I want to uh, want to spend a few minutes talking to you guys about uh, some of the games we have out. Uh, most war gamers have heard about old school tactical right here. Uh, this is the second volume. We're lucky enough to fund that uh, pretty well on Kickstarter. And now what we're looking at here is what's called a production copy. What that means is this isn't a proof. This isn't a prototype. This is the actual game, and I look at the first copies that come off the line to make sure there's no mess-ups with it. So anyway, it's right here. Uh, this, this depicts squad-level combat in Normandy, the Americans against the Germans. Uh, one of the things we try to do at Flying Pig Games is high-quality counters and, and components. I, I think for too long, I've been a war gamer my whole life, too much of this stuff, it's been Oh, it's all about the game. It's not about it's not about the beauty of the game, but the beauty is part of the immersion to us. So anyhow, uh, this game comes with this beautiful map, and this thing is enormous, enormous. I mean, you can fit three small children on this thing. I mean, it's that big. Even you know, like maybe middle schoolers. Yeah, middle yeah. schoolers in there. But uh, you know, nice thick map comes with uh, several sheets of die cut. Nice thick counters have these rounded corners here. I know some of you guys like to clip your corners. You're not going to be able to do it here because these counters they come out. They come out so nicely. The way I store my counters is, I take them out when I'm done gaming. I just put them back in there. So it's kind of like a Euro games or your Mara trash as far as that goes. Uh, rule books, scenarios, luck and data cards. Uh, what's a luck card? Basically, each side will get a card each game. Uh, and it'll let you somewhat alter the strategy and alter what's going on. So that's Old School Tactical Volume 2. Uh, it should be shipping to us in June. It should be shipping to all the Kickstarter people in July. Uh, I did want to talk briefly okay. about the... One, one last question. Sure. When's it going to be retail? When, when, when are they going to be able to get... It should be in retail in early August. Early August? So, Great. Uh, our Kickstarter pledgers will get it late July. People that have ordered off our website get it all after that, and then the retailers will have it in August. So, uh, one Look of the Kickstarter uh, uh, stretch goals, I always want to call them expansions, they really are, is the airborne uh, module. So, everyone that uh, some of this doesn't come in here, this is my bad, some of these are other stretch goals, uh, but it, uh, it comes with more scenarios. Uh, your good old screaming eagles, and these are these are gorgeous counters, and, and, and just, I, I mean, as good as you're going to get. If you're a war gamer, this is right up your alley. And the system is simple. I, I mean, it's strategic enough. I, I mean, I've, I've always been blown away by the things that you've come up Thanks, with. Thanks, I appreciate that. Uh, as you probably know, Shane Logan is the designer, mm -hmm. one of the nicest guys I've ever worked with. And he's come up just with a beautiful system. And again, you come up with another... Uh, monster map. Yeah, you have another monster map, the exact same size as this. So, uh, like I said, these are stretch goals. There's some player aids and stuff. I should have taken them out of that box because now everybody will be yelling at me, oh, you said that we got neoprene mats, but... But um, when... Uh when can Same I get time. my hands on this? Same, Same time? time? Yeah. Perfect, perfect. Ship it in. Uh, did want to talk, if we have a couple more minutes. Oh, yeah, keep going. About uh, two of my favorite designs, because I did them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyhow, one of them is uh, 65. 65 is a card-driven game. Um, so let's just throw these puppies out here. Now, unlike, same quality of components, uh, as you'll see in old school tactical, but what we use with 65 are these geomorphic maps. And what the geomorphic maps allow us to do is set up different scenarios. So it has these heavy mounted geomorphic maps that can be put together in, in many different ways. And it comes with three of them. 
Uh, so some of the scenarios they actually they might use a setup like that. Right. Just slide that up like that. There we go. Thank you. Uh, beautiful large counters. These are the, these are the night. These are the one uh, one inch and in yeah, they are. And these it's one and a quarter for the vehicle. So. Uh, for war gamers, I'm you know we've all been playing with half inch counters. Heck, there's still some companies putting out half inch counters. Oh yeah. In great games, but I'm just saying these components are very big. Uh, what's interesting about 65, I don't want to run out of time here, but basically you do have counters. They are on a map, but the way you activate them is by using these cards. You're dealt a hand of cards each turn, and you can use them to. You probably can't see that. You have to trust me. Uh, but each card will allow you to do different things with a hex of counters, such as move them. Maybe you rally them or call an artillery strike. The, the whole reason I designed this game was to create a, a fog of war in a simple manner. Uh, you don't know if you run in front of somebody, you don't know if they can shoot. Mm -hmm. Because if that guy doesn't have a fire card, he can't shoot. And to me, in all the in all the books and all the Clancy novels or Harold Coyle or, or you know all the silly military fiction that we all read, that's the kind of stuff that happens, and that's the kind of stuff that happens in real life. And I wanted to try to replicate that in a simple manner uh, with 65. Its cousin, because I think I'm probably getting short a little a short a little short <laughs> its cousin is night of man uses the did i get it there i did there i got it you just thank talk. you thank you sir you got it my friend uh same system uh but in night of man you're fighting near future uh, today's militaries against an alien invasion of earth and uh and it's one of my favorite games oh, I, it's, uh, and I, the thing you got max in here too you do, you have mechs in here. And one of the things I just forgot to tell you guys that, that I really enjoy with these games are some of these counters, uh, or some of these people, some of these units, they have special powers. And they can be activated when you play the correct card. And, that, and these special powers can be anything from telekinetics. There's a guy in here that can pick up a tank and move it three hexes, drop it in a pond, for example, which is really bad for the tank. Uh, to a lady that can instill fear and shake the opposing units. So it's a mishmash of, of tactical gaming and, uh, you know, maybe some of the stuff that you might find like with Fantasy Flight or something like that. Oh, exactly. So, yeah. uh, my, my daughter, who's, who's not a big war gamer, played with me and she was just blown away by 65 and Night of Man. Oh, she was like, great. oh, let me try them both. And we play it quite a bit and I, I'm telling you, this is a home run in my book. It always has been. Thank it you so much. I really been. appreciate that. And yeah, I'm biased. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> so am I. But, <laughs> all right, so there you go. Listen, find him at Flying Pig Games. Order these things. You can order online, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. And all this stuff is uh, available. 65 and Night of Man are, are available right now. And um, you can pre order or, volume two, it'll be shipping to you in late July, very early August. Now, we also have the Stalingrad uh, map with it as well. Well, we, we have Stalingrad maps left right. from volume one, right? Not a heck of a lot. Okay, the Stalingrad map, unbelievable. The tactics that you can do is just it's just such a fantastic thing. Mark, thank you so much thank for you coming. So much, Rob. Appreciate I really appreciate it. having you here, and this was a treat for me. Awesome. All right, back to you guys. I'm good. Have a seat, sir. I'm going to give you that. 
So you can talk into it. What do I stare at? Anything? Uh, we're looking right there, right at that one. Yeah. We just got a couple of questions for you. Um, could you run me through the uh, MSRPs of uh, of the game 65 and uh, Night of Man? Is this something I address to them or you? Yeah, you can talk to me, you can talk to them, whatever you like. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, so Night of Man, the MSRP is $80. Okay. And same for 65 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, old school tactical that I was showing over there. It's a little more expensive. I, I believe it's 100 Yeah, let's make sure we get you in here, though. Yeah. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Uh, I believe it's a hundred. I'd have to go back and check. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Someone was asking. You mentioned geomorphic. Can you go into that a little bit more? What you, What you meant by it? How that works? Sure. Absolutely. That's a great question. Um, a geomorphic map is one that can be put together with another map in any manner. So okay. uh, those 65 maps, and it's the same thing for Night of Man, those 65 maps, they're 11 inches by 17 inches. Okay. Okay. Uh, but they can be abutted with other 65 maps in numerous ways. So we have uh, scenarios within that game, stories, levels, however you want to talk about sure, it, right. that say put map one here, put map two there. The next scenario says put map one here, map two there, map three there. So geomorphic means they fit together in numerous ways with other maps. That's Mark's definition. Webster may say something else. Who that, knows? Yeah. that guy doesn't know what he's talking right. about. Uh, and then there was one more question which was pretty interesting, I thought, which was, do you feel any pressure to make war games more accessible these days? You know, that is, that's such a fascinating question. If it we is. had 20 more minutes, I would keep talking uh, about it. I feel two things about that. The short answer would be yes, okay? The long answer is that, let's stick with the short answer for now, okay? okay. Yeah, yes, I do feel that need. And I, and I think that that, that that need is a twofold need. Number one, make them more interesting and more interactive. Right. Okay. That's what I try to do with 65. I mean, you're constantly, somebody's playing a card to move a unit. Somebody's playing a card to shoot a unit. You may be playing a card to react to that. Okay. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, is to make war games that are no longer war games. The strict definition of war games, everyone try to stay awake here because this is boring stuff. It has to be historical. Right. All right. That's... I prefer strategy games. War games tend to handcuff you, and I love playing war games. But if you take a game like Night of Man, the handcuffs come off because I can have telekinetics. I can have uh, people that uh, I can have small wormholes that transport units from one side of the battlefield to the other. And I think, for me, that's exciting. Right. And I think. That for people that's exciting it's just you when you want to when you play a game you want to get that aha moment oh that's so cool I love that and you can I think you can work in more of that with strategy games and you can straight up war games so yes I feel pressure to make them more accessible and I try to do that with our historical games but I also try to do that by squeezing in more of the strategy games yeah fantastic answer thank you very much i think i think we've got it good talking to you <laughs> night time yeah yeah thanks for Take care. thanks for stopping by on this side of the table and giving giving me a little bit too rob doesn't get all of it you know we get some of the cool answers too all right you take care yeah you too see you later good to see you all right yeah let's do that we are going to wrap up over here for this live feed folks we're going to take a little break. We're going to be back in, oh, uh, just a little bit over an hour. We should be back at 1 p.m. our time or thereabouts. So thanks for sticking with us. Uh, come back real soon. And I hope you've been having a good time. We've been having a good time. We'll see you.